Warning! This video contains adult content not suitable for children. What up? It's a Couple of Press Podcast. I'm Jordan Granger, and as always, I'm joined by my buddy... I'm Jordan Bell, and this week we have special guest Leonard Pig. Leonard Pig, yay! Hey. Hey. Yeah, yeah. If you're from Kokomo, you've got to know Lenny. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> like, you do everything. You really, you're, you're, you have a hand in almost every single thing. Just but, about, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, it keeps me out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally, like, if I had nothing to do, like, absolutely nothing, I'm like, yeah, something stupid's gonna happen. <laughs> you know. I feel yeah. like I, I understand that the most. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, you're doing this. Well, I got to do some filming, and then I got a podcast on Sunday, and then yeah. this, this, and this. Okay, cool. But if I went, like, from Friday to Sunday with no plans, oh, man. Like it, it, it's either A, I'm going to go rage out, or B, I stay home and get in all that Morrissey mode where you're just going to sit in there like, yeah, I'm just going to listen to sad British music for an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, intermittently take naps and then like maybe write something, write some spiteful poetry. Like two minutes of video game, yeah. just quit forever. I That's feel me. like we are so close to the same person. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, multiverse yeah. variants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Uh, we're disrupting the space time continuum right now. I've got yeah. two Jordans in the same room. I know, we're we're sucking you in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, we all we, we that's one of the things that we always talk about on here with him is he's like we like to keep busy because if not then like we we get in the shit we get in yeah. the sads we get in, it keeps the as many hobbies as you can have keeps the sadness away and right like, yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah. gotta keep busy because when people when people I what is it idle hands that that old phrase yeah, yeah. yeah. devil's playground yeah the devil's so. playground that's exactly what it is yeah keep them busy keeps me away from felonies yeah thank, thank <laughs> God no more hood rat shit with my friends so <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Hobbies or felonies. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, like blowing on some graphic novels. Don't yeah. buy dope, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to end up with the, the, the <laughs> Howard Hilton reading those graphic novels oh, every God, day just, yeah. for, just to have something to do. Oh. Yeah, they don't give you those. No? No, they give you like old ass, like fucking, like, like books that like elementary school kids like rejected and shit so <laughs> the hardy boys it's yeah I mean, it's some weird i don't the, know the, the matt shit. and jeff hardy boys <laughs> there's some news about yeah, that the tna week, versions right? of there's there's some, there's some news about didn't that he get fired or? uh yeah he they got released this week yeah. um wwe and yeah wwe, WWE yeah. jeff hardy wrestling shit oh what um <laughs> like um uh jeff hardy got released this week because of uh i mean he has substance abuse problems man like yeah he's had him on and on and off intermittent twitter was flaming out his wwe about it because um, they had used his substance abuse as a storyline and then they he relapses and then they let him go and it's like come on now like, oh you can't God. use it as a storyline and then it actually does happen and then you don't want to i don't know how much of that wasn't jeff's idea true uh or he fed into it as yeah well. yeah and like like if you read into wrestling like twitter or anything it's toxic as fuck oh yeah like <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, like every other twitter it, well i mean just just uh, sports it, twitter is to every sports yeah. team is toxic every i don't know wrestling fandom. wrestling twitter will go in on people and people will lose jobs forever <laughs> forever like i don't know man like so like yeah you got you got re the wrestling universe go going in you know, at WWE because they they let go of this guy who ha obviously has substance abuse problems. Yeah. But I think the thing was is that um, what I heard, maybe true, maybe not true. Yeah. Is that he refused to go seek treatment. Oh okay. Um, and they were like, hands are tied sort yeah. of thing. Um, sucks either way, man. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he gets better. Because He's one of my favorites when I was younger. I remember Look, loving him. Jeff Hardy him. is every black person's favorite wrestler. <laughs> 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 oh Tell me I'm wrong. He's just, mm, mm. <laughs> so you just go, you know, it's funny, like, you know, I've been in a wrestling announcer. Yeah. But I haven't been into, like, wrestling in years. Yeah. And uh, there was a show, uh, do you remember we had the sound guy from a different city come in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, he gave me shit for it. He goes, you're not real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, what? I said, I haven't kept up with wrestling since, like, maybe the early 90s. I said, the last, when I, ba I bowed out when, like, everybody had mullets. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. Coco Beware had, like, a Jericho mullet. I said, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 
I think it like for you it it was a different it it was a different like aspect for you to go go it was a different realm for you to be into mm-hmm. right because like it's not something that you you were used to you, you like you had been out of wrestling for so long but I think you did have been doing a kick ass job Thanks. with your announcing and you've been getting better and learning and and like getting if you know your stuff. wrestlers like you know I mean you don't have to know everything about WWE and AEW yeah, and, right, and no. TN, TNA and TNT or whatever the hell all these they've got so many different ones by by the end of it you're like okay I'm, the acronyms are driving me insane yeah. Yeah. I'll worry about AACW <laughs> that's yeah, what right. I'll worry yeah. about I mean and, you yeah. know because the guy's who's your favorite wrestler I'm like uh, I don't have a dog in the race what do you mean uh, like he was a you should have you gotta have like a race you gotta I gotta come with some bullshit just, just say yeah, yeah, yeah I'll just like name drop a dead guy because everybody respects dead guys yeah yeah you say, Eddie, dog, you say right? Eddie Guerrero, immediately everybody's like, bro, yeah, yeah, he's the, yeah, the best. You're good. Just nobody I, can argue you're pretty it. safe if you just go with Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, Eddie like Guerrero, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, and you can't, who doesn't like Latino heat? Latino heat. Yeah. I love Latino yeah. heat. Just, yeah. just, just don't go, just don't go, my, my favorite wrestler is The Rock. Like, you can, that's yeah. cool, but like, you know, yeah. I, I, uh, that could stop the conversation quickly, yeah. though. <laughs> Maybe. My favorite wrestlers are rock, like, all right. I'll well, pick I somebody can't. really obscure. It's like Big Bubba Rogers. And he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't uh, know somebody's favorite. If you, oh, who's your favorite super? And if you say Spider Man, no, you can't. Everybody likes Spider Man. That's good. Somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Pick somebody more obscure. Like, dude, it was. Batman. No, that's another one. You can't right, say right. You Batman, can't, man. You gotta pick somebody else. Like, Frogman? Squirrel Girl? Oh, Jesus, Squirrel Girl. <laughs> that's what man. Remember when they were talking about. Uh, <laughs> At getting somebody to play Squirrel Girl. Actually, they were gonna. They're talking about they Kendrick. Oh yeah. yeah. And, uh, they had. There's footage of. Um, what was it? Oh, it was. They were trying to do a new Warriors pilot. Oh shit. And they got. Um, oh, what is her Maybe name? Maybe that's what it was from. She was. She played Lily on. Uh, Lily from AT and T in the commercials. Mm. And I can't think of her I name. Uh, oh yeah. I she was. was. I don't know the name. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was. Uh, Milana Vanitrop, I yeah, think that's her name. Sounds about right. Because you remember, like she was, you know, she's a very nice looking girl. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And she was busting these people, making these jokes about her, which we were doing a live stream. She got crying. You, well, did you, did you guys see that? No. It was me. weird because, like, you know, she's trying to promote her brand on one of the live streams, and you know, they're getting little hearts and reactions. She's just going on about this, that, and the other. And all of these people are making comments of milkers. Oh, they're talking about milkers and cleavage and jugs and whatever, and they keep referencing milkers and they're saying some really gnarly shit. And she was, they had a big yeah, thing on Twitch about out. that. They had a day off Twitch. Did you guys, did you guys ever hear about that Mm-mm. on Twitter? It was twinding, trending. I'm like, what the fuck's twinding? Because Twitch, nah, whatever. Twinding. Twitter twinding. It sh- twinding. They should have called it twinding because it's Twitter. Whatever. There you go. Like, anyway, it was trending on Twitter, and I was, I was like, uh, what the hell is this? A day off Twitch? Because I don't really, I-, I follow a few Twitch guys from Pokemon, but I don't yeah. really, I don't really mess with that. I missed that. I missed that train. I'm, I'm 30 some four. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I was like, what is this? I checked it out, and apparently. That's what they were having. They were having people in the chat like bombarding hate, like using the N word, like like mm-hmm. saying like, you, "Show me your tits," like much as yeah. like homophobic, racist, uh, uh, sexist, just anything they could say to piss people off in sure. the chat and just bombarding it with like these these bots in the chat. And I guess a lot of the creators were getting like hurt and getting offended, and it was yeah. like, a big deal. So they did a day off Twitch to like get Twitch to do something about it. I don't know if anything ever came of it, but it sounds very similar to what you're talking yeah. about. Like, an, like it could have been even on a Twitch or like on an Instagram. Yeah, one of those. But I guess uh, AT and T said we don't support uh, sexual harassment of any kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they did their statement. And they were like, no, you can't do this. Blah blah blah. And she was she ended up doing a subsequent video where she talked about it. Yeah. And she was like, milkers, really? She was like. You know, it, it's almost. She was saying it was akin to sexual assault. Yeah. yeah. Because it just affected her that way. She was crying. Like, I wouldn't go that far just because I feel like that diminishes actually people who have been sexual assault. Yeah. Yeah. I would not go that far because this is a pre- predecessor to to things that yeah. that could come. Like, well, you, you because they, it's harassment. It's well, definitely yeah, harassment. totally yeah. harassment. You don't know which one of those crazies is the crazies. It's yeah. like, hey, let me let me look up, find out where this chick lives. Yeah. Right. Let me go follow her. Let me go stalk her. Yeah, but when like, internet stuff like that, it's usually just no, the internet wanting to be yeah, yeah, yeah. anonymous and just be a, a yeah. child. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of the internet <laughs> that, that's like just crazy. That's just like, like let me say something just to get some like. Yeah. You know, some sort of, sort of clout, or just to hear my name back, or whatever, like that. Yeah, like, I've heard a lot of celebrities, like I've, like Joe Rogan, those type of people. I've heard mm-hmm. them say specifically that, like, oh, you know, Tom Segura is the one that comes to mind, where he was basically like, this guy was this person hit him up about his special because he used the word retarded in the special, yeah. but he meant it as in like you can't say the word retard anymore. And then they're like, what? You said retard? He's like, I said you can't say it. Like that's what I was saying. So he's like making this whole point about. I know, I know. But he's making <laughs> the whole point about it. But the way they cut the trailer made it 
seemed like he because he was talking about because he says in the in the special not like disabilities are not funny but some are and then they cut it with the him saying you're not supposed to say retard anymore together they're different bits entirely they have nothing to do with each other mm-hmm. he's talking about like when somebody has like uh like like that dis- dysplasia in their head where like you get like a head trauma and then you start speaking in the in a yeah, accent that you don't yeah. like that's yeah. a, like, it's terrible it's terrible yeah. for that person to deal with that but it's kind of funny too because like why are you randomly speaking with the russian accent i don't know i hit my head i've never been to russia i, I mean it's not the, that's not the worst like yeah. that's not the worst disability to exactly have. like sure. there's worse yeah, 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 yeah. and that's what I he was like. saying basically and it, i remember he was saying there was like huge target and so he he said he messes the person messages like you're a piece of shit i hope you die and he was like why like, because you call, you know, people with Down syndrome retarded. And he's like, no, I didn't. Did you watch the special? He's like, no, I didn't watch it. He's like, watch the special. And he's like, a couple days later, he messages him back. And he's like, yeah, my bad. I didn't really. You were just trying yeah. to tell me I should die in a car accident. My kid should die. My wife should die. You just said all this to me. But yeah. he's, and he's basically explaining how the internet's just full of people that just yeah. want to be on a bandwagon. Yeah. want to jump and, and pile on. And it's like, we we dealt with it. The five vid, the five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this article right here. That I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys can see it, but the, okay. the five uh, place places the top, top five, five places, places die. Odie, yeah. Odie oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we we're gonna do round two of that, but I figured we could it's do coming. it with the Kokomo Post and be like the top five places Odie and Kokomo after a delicious meal. You know what I mean? And like, oh my god, like god. they can like be like, hey, it's great. You can get a great, great meal, and then the other half will be us just fucking season on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, 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 trying, they're trying to be serious, and we're just fucking dying. I'm just fucking dying in the corner. Oh my god. And I'm just like, 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 yeah, we have these great restaurants. I, I agree, Kokomo Post. I agree. We, we need to be positive about the restaurant. But can we talk a little bit about people dying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Like, look at the cleanest bathrooms, Kokomo. Look, you open up, there's a guy with me laying up. I'm like, oh, hey, at least the facilities are nice. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to push them right over. <laughs> oh, my God. He, I, just, I mean, just think about the positive. He, 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 he chose this place to go. Yeah. 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 Of all places, yeah. You've been doing it for years. I mean, yeah. I mean, you've been you've had you've been the king controversy for a while. I know you've had some things. Oh my thought. god, there's just been some weird stuff and stalking. Yeah, you had a lot of stalking, dude. Stuff, that was. That's <laughs> well, the name names. You know, yeah, I know. Mean, you guys have you guys have you've had some girls that some some humans that. <laughs> yeah, I've had some <laughs> odd people, and then um, I had somebody was messaging me on Facebook, and they were trying to be a shrink. Just trying to give you a, a quick analysis or yeah what? i was like you know uh, uh I, I think uh you might have a mild personality disorder and this is i'm just yeah. like and i'm like you like i'm here to help you i'm like you want to help me but you're being anonymous i have no idea who you are where you're from you, what, are your, what are your credentials i'm just God like yeah this is, <laughs> seems weird and i'm like and if you are really literally a licensed medical professional you're already like having a breach of, of your oath just by talking to somebody in this kind of a format yeah, yeah. it's one thing if you have like i know they have like the virtual session yeah, yeah, which came yeah, yeah, about yeah. when the yeah when when you ask but you can right, say right. Right. consent matters <laughs> right right it doesn't matter i'm just like this is a fucking hippo violence. shirt's coming oh, yeah. the shirt's coming we have a shirt pardon coming. my language <laughs> oh no you can say I, any fucking thing yeah, you want anything. oh i can curse yeah yes all right this is the stone cold steve austin podcast there you right. go so. we don't have advertisers yet yeah. and, and like, we're, we're not going to take advertisers and and until like just nudity just no like, nudity that's all yeah. you can't do and that's just because youtube got oh, yeah. i'll tell you like controversy i don't know if you heard about this but you remember when the first zombie movie was going to jump off here in town yeah i remember, I remember county like, line. you told me about it before i remember what i was talking about. the whole county line fiasco because there was county line they were casting having auditions or whatever and then um there was another film called iceberg theory yeah. and they were having auditions well i'm an actor i'm an audition for more than one thing of course yeah, yeah. so i got cast in both I didn't think anything of it, and great. then yeah, this is a great day. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah, cool because yeah, yeah. I figure I'm not going to be the lead. I'm, I was already knowing I'm like I'm not going to be the main the main character in either one of these projects. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't anything I read for, right? You know, so I'm like okay, if I'm just like get like a couple of the scenes, you know, do some character work, cool, fine. Yeah. But the county line people, one of the guys calls me and talks to me. Hey man, just want to let you know, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you killing zombies. It's going to be great. Blah blah blah. Okay, cool. And then. I get another call later on. Um, I heard you uh, still online. You got cast in the uh, Iceberg Theory. I'm like, yeah, I'm playing a. Uh, it was like a book editor or something, you know, or book publisher. Yeah. Um, yeah, we. You're gonna have to pick one project or the other. You really can't do both. And I'm like, why not? Uh, I yeah, said yeah. most actors 
can do simultaneous projects. I mean, I mean, I'm only going to memorize my scenes, but not memorize the entire script. Yeah, yeah. Well, but for whatever reason, like no, 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 no. And I think it was because there would be between two factions. Yeah, there and, was in the crypts. Yeah, basically, I'm like. I mean, we know a little bit about those things. Or, yeah, yeah. It's like artsy fartsy film people sniping each other. And I'm like, seriously. Yeah, yeah. I said the fact you tell me to make a choice has made my choice for me. You can yeah, yeah. cast somebody else. I'm, yeah, you made the decision easy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, cool. I don't even think about this. Yeah, know? and the other guys were probably like, good thing we didn't say shit because <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean, and then come to find out, that was all a hoax. Like, oh, it was able yeah. to scam. Like the guy had all these uh, people. They were uh, paying to get T-shirts, and they were paying to be in a zombie walk. It was supposed to be going on downtown oh, to shit. promote the film, and then like. The guy took all the money and just disappeared. The movie never jumped off. It was all just like this massive... And they speech. never would have caught me either if it wasn't right. really meddling kids. And then it was like, there was a front page article in Tribune when it was coming out about it. Or, and they had submitted a photo, which was supposed to have been from a scene from the movie. It was like one of those uh, stock photos you can pay for online. <laughs> it, was like, it was like some girl wearing a... A, uh, one of those uh, gas masks. Oh, yeah. And like this weird smoky background. They're like, oh, yeah, it's a seedy thing. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> now, the irony of that is it's like, so I do Iceberg Theory. And if you get bored, check it out on It's on YouTube, Iceberg Theory. It's a good film. Yeah. Kind of dark, very psychological. Cool. My character isn't like that, though. That's a funny thing. It's like I was like this spark of humor in it. And when I watched the, the showing of it, people were laughing at my scenes and I'm like, I totally just broke the... You broke the fourth wall or whatever? Yeah, like, or not necessarily breaking the fourth wall, but just like there was, it was kind of dark and it was really heavy and then I came in and it's just like, this guy who wins this writing contest is having like a nervous breakdown. He's got these characters that are antagonizing him and talking to him while he's trying to write. And um, I'm just telling the guy, I'm like, well... I trust you. Yeah. I believe in you. You can do this. You know, <laughs> being up, up, beating cheery, and he's just like, you know, he's having that moment where he's like, oh, like, it like a, a difference in tonality of media. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like if you just, even if you just forward it, like if you watch the first ten minutes and you watch that scene, the scene that I'm in, where like I'm talking to this guy, yeah, and my character wasn't part of that. It's like that's not his reality. I wasn't the one going through the psychological trauma and all this nonsense, right? So by the end, it's like, you know, my character's very dismissive. I'm on the phone, and the guy's looking over at me. I'm just like, get back to work. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, you know? But, um, Unaffected. Yeah, 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 really. It's just it's just a whole thing where, and I noticed it, like, the lighting was a little bit different for people in those scenes. Uh, they use a lot of dark contrast i mean it's like i said it's it's a head it's a head trip. so it was like a, a, a decision like a choice like a con a yeah conscious, it's, just, it's it seemed like you make it. you take like this person's taking a vacation out of their own like psychosis in yeah order to get into like a normal and then you're like i don't know what's going on like blah 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 and then that was like the iceberg theory yeah iceberg theory um, is it is that the is that the name of it on youtube like, it is yeah up? cool bother and, and then uh, um I ended up doing Hungry Eyes a few years later, and I'm like, well, damn, I ended up in zombie film anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw you sent us the, the, I didn't see that, but I saw you sent me, I should have watched it while I was at work. I had nothing going on at work. Oh. I literally was doing nothing. I, I didn't realize what it was, and I looked at it, and I was like, what is this? And I, I the thing with me getting texts half the time is I, I do things, and I'm getting bit, and I never go back to things. Yeah. I messaged, I went back last night, I was sitting in bed, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I was sitting in bed, and I was like, oh, I didn't respond to anybody all day today. And I was like, Hey, what's up? Just respond back to everybody real quick. Just like doing the rounds. Like, yeah. like, right, brother, people texted me all day. And this new thing on iPhone where like in your in your messages, if you look at it, like you can put like the top nine people yeah, yeah, that you yeah, talk yeah. to. And then if you click on it, like you can't, they're just, they're always there. So you can't tell the, like, yeah, there's, they a, there's a tiny, oh, tiny, well, no. No, there's a tiny, tiny bubble if they, if they, uh, respond, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll start to say like what they, the, what they said, but you miss it because your right. eye's not looking for it because you're sure. looking for the list. Of it's changed my entire like way that I look at messages. It's so weird. Yeah. Same. So like if Brian specifically messaged me yesterday, I completely rotated the bag and then I messaged him and then we've been talking this morning. So it wasn't a big deal, but I, mm -hmm. he's used to me doing this. I, I'll literally, we'll be talking, talking, talking. He'll say something important and then I'll just disappear for like half a day because I'll forget to message you. I, that, that's how me and Brian interact as well. So it's kind of weird. Okay, so Brian's a huge forehead. So, what? Uh, <laughs> oh, so it's like, uh, what, what? He's like, uh, Jordan texted me back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. I thought he, he probably thought oh, it was the same. God. We were just talking. He just forgot. Yeah. So in your story, well, that you just told us, yeah. we've, we've learned the reasons why um, Paper media is dying, a la mm -hmm. um, 
rest in peace Kokomo perspective. Yeah, rest but, in uh, peace. Yeah. You, you've also Arnett's. been uh -huh. in a lot of projects, especially around here uh, yeah. locally. Like, uh, how, how many, if you, do you have an idea of how, how many, like, like at least, like, movies and things that you've been uh, been in or, or a part of? Around here? Yeah. Um, God, most recent thing's been Canary Curry. Or just and, period. Canary Curry. Well, yeah. that's, like, the big one right now. And, yeah. And even, it's funny, I keep getting recognized, and I forget, because I filmed a lot of stuff during the summer. Yeah. So it's been a few months, and I haven't even thought about it. It's like, because there was a time where I didn't shave, so I didn't break continuity, didn't get my hair cut, and I'm like, and I'm wearing the same outfit. You know, like, my character wore pretty much almost the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except the beginning, I had, like, a different scarf. And the only reason I even wore the scarf is I had had surgery. And I had like this scar on my neck and I didn't want to, and I was feeling self-conscious about it. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, I'll just wear a scarf to cover it up. But then that scarf, I washed it and it turned into this weird, tense knot of yarn. <laughs> like, well, I guess I got to switch over now. Yeah, so, yeah, it's time to get a new one. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I would say, okay, so Canary Currency, I've been doing, um, like doing stuff with the stand-up scene off and on when it's yeah. kind of came and gone. Um, got the Waste of Kokomo podcast. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I've been doing some writing, so I do the stuff for Amos Collaborative. Yeah, you do a lot of writing for Amos, Matt. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And, um, God, what else? I do a little bit of music sometimes. I got collaborated with like Aaron Kane and yeah. some guys like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of times people are working on stuff and they'll reach out and be like, hey, uh, do you know anybody or do you, is this something in your wheelhouse? And I go, yeah. And, or I can at least, you know, refer them. So, um, and then I've been helping out on uh, the State of Mind podcast yeah. or the. The live stream David Stay does on YouTube, and sometimes it's on like D Live and a couple others. So I get on there because like the people in Discord that are in this group can go on and jump in the chat sometimes, and yeah. you know actually be on you know like voice chat with him while he's doing the show, and and it's, it gets pretty wild. I mean because like you were talking about the trolling and stuff. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. That first people wave come in and uh, do it all day. Like before the show would even come on, somebody'd be writing ethnic slurs in the chat, and then. <laughs> You know, and he's just like, what the hell's wrong with you? He just lay into these guys. Like, most times people are like, I'm just going to ignore them. It's I'm almost like you feed it, the when, you, when you like comment to them, it's almost like you feed into them because then they want to keep doing it. So you yeah. Like talking to them. Like, That's what they want. They want the rise. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. You, and we know of that from live streams that we've done. And Xbox yeah. Live even. Like, we know. Oh, like, God. Like, yeah. you losing a match, somebody will, is going to say whatever word they can to piss you off. Yeah, and get, absolutely. If you have one that you let it get to you, then they'll find it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, I guess. I yeah, know. You really want to mess somebody uh, when you're trying to do the Xbox stuff. This buddy of mine, we'd do this trick where um, he would play the game, but I would wear the headset. <laughs> and I'd be talking in a voice, just talking yeah, yeah. crazy shit to people. Like, at one point, I was doing a Steve-O impression. And I'm like, hey, guys, it's Steve-O from Jackass. What's up, dudes? And these people are like, what? <laughs> and, like, they they were kind of skeptical at first, and I'm starting to start talking about partying out with Bam, and they're like, no shit, and you know, and like it kind of threw him, like, because I thought maybe he's actually Steve-O. Yeah, yeah, so I like either did that. My buddy Joe used to do this thing where he would read from uh, 120 Days of Sodom, yeah, the Marquis de Sod book. You ever read that? No. <laughs> but you, or, or here's what you do: don't read it. You go on YouTube and find the audio book for 120 Days of Sodom, and just listen to it. So you hear like this guy with a very posh British accent talking about flogging a whore to death and <laughs> urinating on people, and it's like. Yeah, there's, I mean, you really want to ask people in gaming, that's one way to do it. You just, or put some weird audio on, you know, yeah. woman screaming. Or if you can do like a, a Morgan, it's a me, Morgan, <laughs> yeah. do it, hey kids, <laughs> just like, this literally just like, do an entire like, over, over talk of like everything they're doing, just like, follow them around, just die and follow them. Because yeah. I know like, after the game's over, you can still watch the kid <laughs> playing, just do the entire thing of like, just, just narrating, just narrating with Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Did did he know oh, there was a man God. behind him with a bazooka or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, like it's it. it's kind of like, I, you know, I wanted to get, like, one of the newer systems, but... There's thing there. I'm yeah, avoiding, there's thing there. I avoided doing it because I'm like, man, the newer systems now, they're not completely independent. It's like all connected network. You can multiplayer, oh, yeah. and I'm like, people can be dicks. I don't know if I want to multiplayer that much, oh. you know? I think it's cool. I, the funny thing is, my son, he's he's right here behind the wall, and he he'll play Xbox all day. Like he, mm -hmm. he and he goes in and out of like like he's he started like real big in Fortnite. Obviously, that was like his generation. And then he like because it's like 
it's kitsch almost now, like to play Fortnite. So he'll be like, oh, you like Fortnite anymore? And then a new season will come out, and he'll be like, and they're like, yeah, the new Fortnite. And I heard yeah. him screaming the other day, just screaming at it. It was hilarious. Like we talked about last podcast, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yeah. so it was so jarring listening to him. Yet. like he was so excited. And yeah. I'm like, I haven't. The last time I heard this kid this excited, it was the first time he saw boot. I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, wait till you see boobs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just kidding. Man, when they started having some of those Marvel characters pop up. Oh, yeah. And people were going crazy behind that. The Rock. Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, The Rock popped up on that shit. He was like, oh, The Rock helped wow. him out of the situation. I'm like, that to me would be enough for admission. I'm like, I would love to play yeah. a game and The Rock just shows up like, hey, what's up? And I'm just like, hey, it's me, Kevin Hart. And I just pretend like I'm Kevin Hart. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> they're not even together. I mean, yeah. honestly. You see that That's meme old. with uh, The Rock, and he's wearing like a, a shirt, and he's in like the, a jungle, and they have like four of them. They're like, just so you guys know, these are four different pictures from four different movies, <laughs> because he's literally done this like Jungle Cruise role with yeah. the new one, and he did the one with uh, the Red 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 those. Huh? He did two of those, right? Yeah, he, he did Jungle Cruises. Well, he did that, and then the the Journey to the Center of Earth, and he yeah. do like the he Jumanji. Took over Jumanji. And then the rundown with, yeah. uh, was it Sean something? I can't remember. William that. Scott? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love Sean William Scott. I always thought he, he never got, he he played that frat boy, and then people were like, I don't like frat boys, which I get. <laughs> but, like, he he was hilarious. I mean, there was him, and then there was uh, Ashton Kutcher, right? Yeah. At, at the time. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. But he did more. But who, who's going to say no to Ashton He Kutcher? did more for for frat boys, for, for, for frat boys than anybody ever, because, like, What's the movie? Uh, Road Trip. Pioneer. Yeah. He literally gets his Pioneer. butthole played with in Road Trip. Like he's like he's like, they were like tried to make him into a stiffler character, but he ended up being like the most sex positive. Just, you know, he was like loved the woman. He liked older women. He liked yeah. pre med mm-hmm. women. He liked fingers in his ass. He was the cool. Yeah. And he helped his buddy get a. And then he stole that blind chick's, uh, <laughs> like the 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 bus from the blind chick. Yeah. I love that movie. I will. It's a movie that nowadays, if a kid watched it, they'd be like, this doesn't make any sense because like he sent a videotape across the country. And and like was worried. Like yeah. nowadays, if you did that, you would send an audio. You'd send the file. You'd be like, "Well, I'm fucked. It's over. Yeah, game yeah, over. It's over. You wouldn't send a videotape. Or so. if you did, now it's like people don't have VCRs anymore. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, what is this? Oh, Paperweight? Let me let me, let me delete this." Real Speaking fast. of acting, I, I sent a message. <laughs> <laughs> hey, message. what was that? Oh, man. Yeah, Facebook has been on that shit. It's funny that Twitter hasn't caught up to that because like Twitter, you post something. If you have a typo and you've got fifty yeah. re- like likes, you're done. Like you, you're, you can't fix it. You can't even, you can't wow. even change. No. like a typo. It's mm-hmm. it's stuck there. They don't even have like they flirted with like a a, a five minute window mm-hmm. where they let you and then they have to keep it there. But they're like, we like the way like when you it's it's there forever. And I'm like, no, that's stupid. I yeah. want to change things. Yeah. You know, Facebook is ahead on that. I, I have say. to be way more conscientious when it, when I like tweet something because I'm like. <laughs> the thing has to yeah. be right. <laughs> I, I tell you, it was crazy. Like when the whole Comics Gate thing jumped up. Did you guys know about that? No, tell me about it. Oh my God. Okay, so there were uh, there was there's a lot of guys in the comic book industry that are conservatives. They are oh, yeah. not, you know, they're just. I mean, everybody's gonna have their differences politically. Oh yeah. But they felt like the company is more liber- liberal that they're working for. And that kind of alienated them on some level. So a lot of these guys like either quit, got fired, or whatever. So they dipped because. Uh, the big idea is that these social justice warrior Can't types are coming in or just like, you know, uh, changing stuff up. I mean, you know, uh, right now, uh, there's this whole thing where like, some people are saying it's a conspiracy theory, but it's not really a th- conspiracy theory because it's actually happening. Yeah. But, okay, so Aqualad's gay in D.C. Uh, the Tim Drake Robin. Is that Aquaman always been gay? Aquaman? No, Aqualad. His Aqualad. sidekick. But it's not his original sidekick, it's the young black dude. Oh, cool. So they turned him, so they made him gay. Okay. That's fine. The Tim Drake Robin, they, they've kind of been toying with the idea of him being bisexual. Yeah. And I think he's supposed to be getting a boyfriend. Uh, Superman's son, who's taking his dad's place now, is like they had this big issue where he kisses a boy. Yeah. yeah. And so they're you know, saying he's... The podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're saying he's bi. And I thought, well, you know, if you're going to do that, you can make these young dudes, like you can take, you know... Superman and this Robin to make them a power couple, like literally. Yeah, yeah. And that would be interesting and groundbreaking, but I feel like they're just making these characters, well, it came out, and it's like, okay, and then what? Yeah, yeah. I See, I, I, mean, think, is I it, think the problem is that, like, a lot of these places are, and idea creators are just like, hey, let's do something that's progressive. Yep, let's give them a boyfriend. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Let's make them gay. It's, it's almost become it's, the new, like, uh, let's just make him a black guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And eventually, Oops, sorry, no, eventually, it'll be something else, around. right? Like, um, yeah. Like I, I don't know what what it 
progressively would be mm -hmm. beyond yeah. beyond this. But yeah, a disabled it, Superman. <laughs> he's like maybe, flying, and his yeah. wheelchair's behind him, and he's like trying to <laughs> dragging it. He can't was the handy man. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, Living yeah. color back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so it ends up like like I said, it's big controversy. And one of the guys who I think is a phenomenal artist, he's been in the he's been a veteran for at least I want to say twenty five years, maybe. Ethan Van Skyver. He was. Uh, I remember when he was doing X Men in the early two thousands. He had a really long run on Green Lantern, did Flash. He's on Superman. He's done a ton of stuff. Yeah, very talented. I met the guy. Friendly as all get out. Yeah, but he was a conservative, and he was doing live streams. And he was there at the inauguration when Trump got elected. And he was like shouting down protesters. He was like, "Fuck you guys." He's from Jersey. You're gonna put up with that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and these folks were like, "I can't believe this." Oh my god. I'm like, <laughs> "Well, what did you expect?" Just because he's an artist. That he's gonna be like this crazy liberal guy who lives in a commune or something. That's exactly what they expect. They yeah. expect you guys. They expect. They want a monolith of like thought processes. They mm -hmm. want diversity of everything except for thought. Yeah. They want diversity of looks. They want diversity of who you fuck. They want diversity of of how you of everything except for how you think. They sure. don't want you to think differently. And the thing is, like, like the great thing about small towns, like let's say Kokomo. Let's just take what we have in general. This is the Kokomo Press podcast, by the way. Um, yes. Kokomo is a small town. Do you have somebody like our mayor right now who made a day for LGBTQ youth? He's a conservative mayor. Yeah. He still recognizes the plight of young LGBTQ people in, in Kokomo. He marched with the, I think, the Black Lives Matter. He marched, yeah. But he's a Republican. Yeah. You can have that at this level, but for some reason, when you get these higher levels and you get to these artists and stuff, they start to stifle the, the amount of... Uh, of of differences of like going between groups you can go between yeah. groups you can change your mind you can feel about one way about this and feel one way i can feel like i completely support my lgbtq friend over here and then the, over here watch my friend who's making a mockery of it who's pretending to be a certain way who's mm -hmm. doing it for clout i can also call that out i should be able yeah. to do both so yeah. i feel like as long as there's this this the ability to like to have the conversations to be for people to have both sides of the of the aisle con conversate and have mm -hmm. I think we're good. I think small towns, we don't have that problem. So when we see that, like when we see these big areas like LA, New York, you know, Boston, these places where you're not allowed to be conservative or you're not allowed to be some places like Texas, you can't be liberal very easily. So I mean, there's when you see that and you see things being one way, it's weird to us because we don't we don't we don't see that in everyday life. Not too often. I used to live in Indianapolis, and one of the things that tripped me out was it's like I was down there for years, used to vote, and I would do independent. That's how I signed up, right? Yeah. I moved back here. And then, like, one of the first times I went to get registered to vote, they were like, Democrat or Republican? said independent. Like, we don't have that. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. We don't have independence here. I said, how do you not have independence? Yeah. I said, you don't have any? No, it's July you... 4th literally exists. There's a day for it. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, I, it's like, damn. It's like, there's no libertarians. There's no Green Party. There's none of that stuff. Yeah. No, I'm like, okay. I guess... There's barely a Democrat party here. <laughs> I, anymore. I... It used to be a lot stronger. Yeah. Like, it used mm -hmm. to be a lot, lot stronger. Oh, yeah. It cycles. Right. I mean, Goodnight was mayor for a million years. Yeah. True. Oh, so this whole thing with the comic industry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I kind of. No, you're good. I, I derail stuff all the time. But, um, back. <laughs> this is, this is like, what we do. Yeah, we all have ADHD. But, you know, so, like so like I said, Ethan Man's guy, for instance. So he broke away and started doing his own thing. And, you know, uh, he crowdfunded. Yeah. You know, doing Kickstarter. And he was doing a book, like, because he did a book called Cyber Fraud back in the day. Yeah. And he was bringing it back and did a whole new story, doing it all in color. And he was going through and just doing it himself. And other yeah. guys started doing the same things. Yeah. And so it became this thing where people are like, well, these guys are racist. I'm like, conservative isn't necessarily racist. They're not yeah. equal. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, if, if he was such a bad guy, he would not have you know, taking the time to interact and talk with me because he knew I was doing a podcast and we had yeah. a conversation about it. It's like, yeah. you know, I've, dude, I've met racist ass people. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I've worked in retail. Like, you'll see that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I worked at Sam's Club like a hundred years ago. I remember one time I was, I was working service desk and there was a lady that used to come up I and she days. would never. I told you story. Yeah. <laughs> what? No. She, I just remember working at Samsung back yeah. in the day. <laughs> God, see, we keep having these weird similarities. It's really tripped up. I know, man. But, um, this lady would come down to the service desk and make payments for a credit card. And if there were a, was a line, because there were two registers, yeah, I'd be like, I can help you over here. And she's like, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just standing. Stay on the line longer. I, I can help. I said, anybody, yeah. I said, anybody else, anybody wants to step over here? I can help you out. I can get you taken care of. So somebody'd step over and, cause, and she would just wait. And so the first couple of times it was a girl I was working with. I said, is that like your aunt or something? She's like, ooh. I said, the, the lady with the ponytail. She goes, no, I don't know her. <laughs> I said, she didn't want me to, to ring her up. She said, okay, whatever. And then it happened two more times, and I was just like, 
I don't even, I didn't even, they got the point. I'm like, I'm not even going to ask her if she needs help because she did not want me to help her. <laughs> yeah. And the re return of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> yeah, Ku Klux, Ku Klux, Klux Klan. 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 That's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Ku, Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Klan. Yeah. Klan. See, it's hard to say, right? Ku Klux Klan exists. <laughs> They're out there. Yeah, and then the crazy thing was, it's like there's one day I'm down to service us by myself. And she walks up and I'm like, can I help you? And she's like, I need to make a credit payment. I'm like, okay, no problem. I got you. Yeah. And I was smiling the whole time. Yeah. You doing all right today? And she's like, no, oh God. And I'm like, is that Parkinson's or is that like her blood pressure spiking <laughs> up? And she's, like, some and she's like, this African man's going to steal my credit card info. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want shit you have. Like, yeah, yeah. Literally, literally making a credit payment yeah. right now. But, you know, here's the thing. You got these guys that are in the, from the comic industry that ha already had a following because it's like they're on a book. People buy the book because they are at work. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. People like writers, too. But yeah, there's yeah. times where it's like you'll see, you know, you'll get some new Jack writer and then people are like, yeah, I don't know about this guy. Yeah. And they say, oh, but, you know, Jim Lee's doing the artwork. And like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So you've got a lot of these guys and they're an unofficial group. Like, if you look up any of the comics gate stuff, they just... They're all trying to do Kickstarters, and they're all supporting each other, going, hey, so-and-so's doing Independent this. Independent creators. Yeah, that's really what it is. And it's like, it's almost like in the 90s, we had, like, Marvel's most popular artists all up and just dip out and start Image. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a whole other kind of thing. But then you, I've noticed, too, other companies, um, I think, uh, it wasn't IDW, it might have been Dynamite. And a couple of these other independent companies are doing, or like smaller companies, are doing crowdfunding. So yeah. they're like, they'll say, oh, we got this Joseph, uh, Joseph Michael Linsner book coming out. He's going to do Vampirilla, and we're going to come out with these exclusive chromium blood-colored covers. And, yeah. you know, if you donate to this, you can get, okay, cool, we pledge this amount. And so a lot of the independent comic companies are doing that now. It's just a thing. I yeah, mean, it, it, it has to do, right? And it extends kinda. past comics, or comics even, because, yeah. like, Gina Carano. Do you guys remember that shit that happened with Gina Carano? Oh, from, yeah. Uh, oh, Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she mm -hmm. basically got ousted because she was, like, putting, like, Trump and the anti back stuff on Twitter, and they're like, yeah, we just don't want to deal with it anymore. So they got rid of her. Yeah. Yeah. And then, next thing you know, she's working for, like, the most conservative news network, Daily Wire, and she's putting out her own movies. And mm -hmm. to me, like, at the end of the day, like, if you can get funding, if you can get somebody to produce your shit, yeah. like, by all means, do your own independent stuff, especially if you're a good actress. She was, what, a USC, mm -hmm. UFC fighter, and then mm -hmm. became... Uh, an actress and I really enjoyed her in the show I'm actually really bummed I think she that, that the Mandalorian loses a little something it's not going to lose much they still have John Favreau they still have yeah. the, mm -hmm. the writer of the Clone Wars what's the name uh, the, the guy that writes the Clone Wars he's uh, uh, one of the guys on there I can't remember, but anyway, he okay. he's one of the bigger one of the bigger writers people really love, and they they really support him. And he's doing he was doing good shit when Ryan Johnston was fucking up the the trilogy, and yeah. When J.J. Abrams was doing weird shit, and like he was doing good stuff that people like. So it's like this whole this whole situation is going on with them, and then you have the you have Gamergate, you have Comicgate, you yeah. have all these different people that Pizza are just Gate. decided we're doing Pizza Gate. Pizza Gate, Pizza Gate. <laughs> Pizza Gate's a little different. Uh, <laughs> they may not been real. I don't know about that. Man, one. that one's a little weird. Gotta ask Q later. Man, I, I got this question. Really, people almost died because of it, though. That was, so, yeah. I mean, somebody storming in the compound with a gun, like, oh, oh, you guys don't have a basement full of kids. Okay, I'll <laughs> oh, just go ahead. So my bad. Back away, Homer yeah, Simpson style, and go to the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was a punisher. He's like, yeah, yeah. no, no, sorry, sir. At least, at least that was a Q and honor that, like, had, like, some some, some sense balls. About him. Yeah. Well, no, some common sense <laughs> about him. Even if his common sense didn't come until after the fact, right? Yeah. Like he get he got all the way up there, and he was like, "Oh, oh shit, oh they're yeah. they're not they're not eating children <laughs> in, in here. That that's not a thing. Yeah, it's, it's just a pizza shop. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I wish there had been more common sense. I know I, I, we didn't talk about talking about this before today, but I, I wish there had been common sense with these parents up up in Wisconsin. Was it Wisconsin where this kid? Oh yeah, yeah, Is that Wisconsin. Yeah, the text oh, messages from. Or, oh, that was are you talking about the Kyle Rittenhouse thing? Or? No, no, that's Wisconsin. What am I thinking of? Was it Michigan? Are you talking about them? Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, the Michigan parents. Yeah. Uh, well, they just got arrested because of that whole situation. Because that, that did you guys hear about? There was like a bunch of information that was that came out where like he had, they, they the school had had called his parents in because he had made like a really crazy drawing about killing people. Yeah, and they called him and said they need to come pick him up, and they said, "No, we're not gonna pick him up. He's fine. He's yeah. fine." And then he shot up the school right there. Yeah. And the dad went home, looked up, found his gun was gone, and then contacted the school. And the gun was gone, and by the time he contacted the school, 
It's too, too late. late. It's too late. <laughs> See, in that situation, there's a whole lot of people at fault, right? Because, oh, yeah. okay, school called parents and said, hey, there's issue with kid. Yeah. Something's not going on. Something's going on with head. I don't think there's a safety issue, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's on the parents to be like, all right, let me come get my kid. Yeah. Even though the parents are pieces of shit, yeah. right? Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> the school just let him stay at the school. Yeah. Well, I don't know what their option. I don't know what the leg legally what they can do option wise. I I know here like, it, quick, fast, in a hurry, they would take somebody to either McKinley or to like fuck McKinsey or yeah. something like that, mm -hmm. and they'll they'll find a reason to take somebody to McKinsey or to Real Gym. Well, we do live in the law and order capital of you know law and order. Law and order. Yeah. <laughs> bum bum. Sorry. Add that in post. Yeah, add that in post. SVU. Yes. That's the worst line. I, yeah. I didn't get to tell you this, but I was talking to you. We talked a little bit about the acting thing. Yeah, yeah. And your your Mr. Bell character. Yeah. Jesus Jones. Um, there was a guy. Here's here's how you can tell that somebody is a is a good actor. Can I just say real quick before you say that, Jesus Jones. Yeah, I we'll go back to that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, I started saying it. I was like, Jesus, Jones, man. Come on. <laughs> anyway, your Mr. Bell character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Mr. Bell character, because we were talking about actors that get typecast or pigeonholed and stuff. Not that saying it's going to happen with you or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But if you can do something and elicit a response from people, I feel like you're on the right track. Like, yeah. obviously, you did your job. Like, yeah, yeah. I had people, when Fer Canary first came out, I think the first couple episodes were online. I was going to Supley's, and this guy was like, "You crazy motherfucker, man! Yeah. <laughs> you real crazy motherfucker!" Well, I was laugh. like, "And yeah, I, yeah, and yeah, I, it's the laugh." And me, I didn't like, know because he didn't. He just come up and just says this to me, and I'm like, "Did he see me get in a bar fight or something <laughs> like five years ago? <laughs> what What's going on? I'm like, "Oh God!" I'm like, "I'm like, oh, what is a girl I'm seeing or something yeah, like that?" Yeah. No. And he's like, "On that show, man, you on that Canary show?" I'm like. Yeah, and like, yeah, but the laugh is what did it. And yeah, like, the laugh was crazy. People, yeah. it, people thought I was going to be like the big bad. I was like the sinister. Like, yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you who and what I am. And I, just check it out at your own leisure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. check it out. Canary Currency. Canary Currency. It's on Amazon Prime. Both Tubi. Seasons. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, on it's Tubi. Like TV. Yeah. yeah, check it out. It's it, it's it's locally produced by by uh, Black, uh, and it's it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I mean, where you're in it. I'm yeah, technically yeah. in it some point, somewhere. We'll see. Right. I think you're. Yeah. I'm just standing, in, standing there like this with a gun. Very like good. The whole time. Yeah. Oh, but um, so one of the shows, I'm talking to this guy, and he's getting mad, like he's legitimately getting upset. Yeah. Because every time you were just like at one point at one of the shows, he's sitting off the far side, and you had your mic and your speaker, and you were just interjecting intermittently here about what's going on. He was like, "Jesus, God, what's wrong with this guy?" And I'm like, yeah. "He's playing." part and i'm like i'm not getting that this guy is like really like seriously getting agitated so i'm just like he's like yeah. what's his fucking problem I'm like he's playing a character i'm like he's was a, it the, was it a kid that was just like sitting like right no, now it was funny it was the it was the, the the other sound guy he was just like i can't stand this fucking guy oh, oh for real God. he was getting <laughs> like i'm like hey i said hey you know he's playing a character right yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like he's playing a character he's like you but were getting under his skin. Dude, like, like, he's up, he's like, you're legit. Because he's up there, he's like tweaking the sound shit. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was doing that. You know somebody get bad when a motherfucker does this, like. <sighs> <laughs> Love it. It's like, are you all right? It's like, no, the drugs are kicking in. <sighs> like, I don't know. But he was just like. I, 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 but, I mean, of course, he told me I was a scumbag for not, like, keeping up on wrestling. I'm like. Yeah. I'm like, that's another fandom that I end up blowing money on. It's like, yeah. uh, a couple years ago, I was doing a show with Breakfast Anytime, Time, and we're an improv group. They're based out of Indianapolis. <clears throat> Shit, throat too yeah, high. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't die on there. I, I just love hearing that. I'm not sure I'm under somebody's skin so much that they forgot that this was a wrestling yeah, show and they're playing a character. Yeah, I, yeah man. That that's... makes me so fucking happy. Check <laughs> <laughs> <Shack> mark. Yeah. <laughs> You like level up. <laughs> he's gonna, the problem is you told him this next time he's gonna look at him like when my pin goes up, yeah. their mouth goes shut, and he's gonna look right oh at him. Oh my god! Because you remember like I'm right? Just gonna look at him and be like, shut the fuck up, sound guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was doing improv and like. Uh, What's the name of it? Breakfast. Breakfast anytime. Okay. Breakfast. Cool. Anytime. And they've got a bunch of funny videos on YouTube and stuff, yeah. and totally worth checking out. Yeah. Um, we did Starbase Indie. 
I think it was 2018, maybe 2019. Yeah. And so we went there, and it was supposed to be a Star Trek centered improv because it was a you know a Trek convention. Yeah. I'd never been to a Trek convention. It's like I've been to like a generalized type of convention most of the time. It's like Wizard World or you know PopCon Indie or Indiana oh, Comic Con oh, or something yeah. like that. And although I did go to Chicago TARDIS once with a buddy of mine, it was all like Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and oh my god. Yeah. They they have this thing called Lobby Con where everybody's just hanging out in the lobby, like because everybody's staying in the hotel for the weekend. But everybody's down there in their in like wearing their costumes and they like cosplaying and getting hammered and yeah. cracking jokes and just having fun while there's events going on throughout the night. But, yeah. wow. but anyway, so I, I wasn't a huge Trek person. I didn't dislike it. Like when I was in college, my roommate was real big in the Next Generation. Yeah, yeah. So I would watch that with him, you know, and because it was on. They had in, in syndication pretty hardcore then. I'm like, okay, cool. And I respect it. And I dug it. And then when they had some of the other subsequent shows, I watched it, but just not like on a consistent basis, right? Yeah, yeah. So for like the two weeks leading up to the show, I was just like immersing myself in Trek stuff. Yeah. And so I'm like watching these videos on, on Research, YouTube. Baby. Yeah. And it was funny because I was just like, this shit's kind of cool. And if I get too into it, I will blow money. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. like, I got to get that Starfleet pin. Yeah. I gotta get that. I'm like, no, 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 no. You just <laughs> learn it for that. Like, you gotta treat it like a gig. It's a gig. You do it. You do the thing, and then you dip. And yeah. so I, I did. It was fun. But yeah, it's like uh, you know, Jeffrey's tubes and things like that. All this different stuff. Some of the terminology that just wasn't you know, if you would have to really know to kind of go, yeah, I'm part of this, or I'm, I'm into this. And yeah, it was just that phew. seems difficult. It seems difficult if you're not already into it. So yeah, like, it's it's, that it's seems like just about anything else. Like like. Pokemon terminology, mm -hmm. wrestling terminology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to be a little into it mm -hmm. to understand. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but even then, like, there's. I've learned it, it's fun. It's funny because like I watched wrestling all growing up, but I didn't. There wasn't as much backstage stuff because like you didn't have all these podcasts. You didn't have all these YouTube episodes, uh, YouTube uh, videos where they explain all this. Like I, I literally watched. Remember, I told you the other day. I was talking to. I was like, I keep, I keep trying to learn more about wrestling because like mm -hmm. this shit keeps popping up on my YouTube. So I'm like, I'll watch it. Whatever, I'm getting yeah. into it. And if it's 90s and before attitude stuff, I'm really into it. So I'm like, okay. And so I watched an hour long video at work the other day about the Montreal screw job just, just because like I wanted to know all the backstage shit. Yeah. And it like went in depth about the story, contract. Huh? It's an inc it's an incredible story. Yeah. I remember when it happened. Yeah. I was a little kid, mm -hmm. but I remember when it happened. Yeah. Also, fuck Brett, Brett the Hitman Hart. He's he kind of a jackass. He did it wrong. He's kind of a jackass. In that situation, he didn't do much wrong. He no, he did a lot wrong. He's kind of a jackass. Maybe the video I watched was like a pro hitman version of it because Probably. it seemed like he was trying to get one last payday, and Vince Vince gave him a contract. Gave said this is what you want. He agreed to it. It was less money than he was going to get with WCW. He agreed to it because he was their highest paid star, mm -hmm. and he was making less money than Kevin Nash and, and Razor Ramon when they went to WCW. He was making less money than them. That doesn't make any mm. sense. But he said, you know what? I don't want... He was worried about his legacy. He's like, I don't want to leave the WWE, WWE at the time, and go go to WWE because of my legacy. I want to keep my legacy intact, blah, blah, blah. That's how he felt. He meets up with Vince, or he gets the the, the offer from Eric Bischoff. It's like $3 million. He gets, yeah. He's going to give him th or $2.5 million or $3 million and lighter, a lighter schedule, which is great for a guy who's 39 years old, yeah. about to be 40. He wants a lighter schedule. So then he goes to Vince, lets him know what he wants. Vince says, okay, this is what I'll give you. It's way less money. But I want you for 10 years, and I want you to come back on Legacy. I'm going to give you $250,000 yeah. in the twilight when you're done as a legend, a, a legend I can call anytime I want to come back on the show, just for random shit. And he's like, okay, he agrees to it. He gets the contract. Vince gives him a contract that's not what they agreed on. It's not what they said. This is according to the, what, I, what I watched. And he, gave him, like, he, he shows up with the wrong contract. Brett gets pissed off, says, I don't want to. That's not the contract we agreed on. Yeah. They go back, hammer up the details. He signs the contract, apparently. And then apparently from there, shit, then he, then he, this whole thing, like part of it was like he put in the new contract when they went to renegotiate again, that he has con the control of his last 30 days. So that's where the Montreal screw job came, came in because in his last, he didn't want his legacy getting tarnished like so many people. That was his whole point was, I don't want to leave the w uh, WF because I don't want my legacy getting tarnished. And I also want to have control towards the end. And it just happened to be that the end of his contract was that whole situation with the Montreal Screwdriver. I felt like the, 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 some of that was... So what do you know? What, what, what's different well, than you know? The, the contract thing was, was a thing, but it, it, it ended, up, ended up being... He, he came to Vince, he was like, hey, uh, WCW's offered me like 10 mil, something like that. Or right. it, was a, it, it was a lot of money at the oh, time. Yeah. And then he came back to Vince and it was like, hey, uh, can you match this? Can you blah, blah, blah? Can You know, I really want to stay here, blah, blah. And Vince is like... 
yo, I don't really have that. Can't do what they're offering you. So, and then, and then Brett said, I guess exactly what happened. Brett said, give me the, what's the best offer you can give me. Yeah. And then like, uh, but Brett didn't, he didn't sign the WWF contract. He signed, he signed the WCW contract. After the end, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he knew he he knew he was going to WCW. They were letting his contract expire. Vince, from a business standpoint, knew that that was happening. So the the whole point, it wasn't the Montreal screw job to screw Bray. It was it was hey, we got to get the belt off of this guy. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He hasn't let us, or he hasn't really like, we haven't really been able to get the belt off of him. We have to get the belt off him before he leaves. He can't because just... of what happened with the girl. There was a girl that yeah. went to WCW and basically threw the thing in the trash. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched the whole thing on it, like because it, it set that up. It was like this is it, it already happened to the yeah. WWF one time where they weren't going to have their world, their most important belt yeah. go to WCW and get thrown in the trash. They're like, "Fuck you, we're not doing that." Yeah, yeah I yeah. see where Vince. Is. I'm not saying that Brett was right, yeah, but I'm had... saying they were both sides fucked up hardcore. I'm not saying it. Look, Brett. Brett, at the end of the day, like, like, was always about Brett and thought he was better than everybody else, man. Do you like, think Shawn he, Michaels he, thought he was very he was, wasn't good? Shawn Michaels was like, oh, I'm super humble. No. You think the game is super humble? Like, name no, one no. wrestler that's not all about themselves. No, no, I get, one. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But, like, he's one of those guys that was said, always always said, like, I do this for the business. I do this for the bo- the boys. He was a legacy guy. The, the thing, yeah, yeah one of those guys. Yeah. And for him to be like, no, I'm not dropping his belt, fam. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not how the business goes. No, yeah, yeah. that's not how. The business I definitely goes. think that either way, either way, I think both sides, both sides fucked up on that after watching it. I definitely do agree with why Vince did it, and then yeah. Vince, Vince saying punch me for hit me, yeah. let him hit him and knock him out on the fucking floor, give him a concussion. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. Vince knew that shit was coming, and Vince is an all man. Like, oh yeah, he'll he, take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <he'll> take <laughs> you know, it. He, but he knew he knew he had to because he fucked. Yeah. He, as much as he did what he thought was right, he still fucked a man over. Like I yeah. feel like, and that I feel like that in and of itself, but he proves had to. to Brett's point. Proves Brett's point a little bit because Vince was willing to get punched in the face for it because he knew that he deserved to get punched in the face. I think legit. I think Vince was willing to get punched in the face because he knew at the end of the day he he was doing the right thing for for his company. Yeah. Yes, but he also knew he was doing the wrong thing by Brett. That's I, what I'm saying. I think it was both. I think he yeah. can straddle that shit. I mean, you you can't please everybody. No, no. Sometimes you're gonna get punched in the face. That's, that's that old Mitch Hepburn joke. You can't please everybody all the time. And last night, all those people were at my show. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the best. It's one of my favorite. Uh, it's so, I knew you guys used to do some comedy here and there, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever do it in like Indianapolis or any of the surrounding areas? No, I see. Stand up was more of something like Brian got me into it because you know Jimmy was doing the shows mm-hmm. and I was like, I'll, I'll. I mean, Brian was like, you should do stand up, and I'm like, it's not my thing. I like to write jokes. I'll, I'll help you write jokes for your stand up, and he's like, no, you should do it. So I was like, I'll come up and do it, and he's mm-hmm. like, we'll at least introduce you as the Kokomo Scanner guy, 2.0 guy. So people like, were like, oh, we know this guy's funny. So I was yeah. like, okay, I'll do it. I did. I had fun. I wrote some jokes. I had a good time doing my sets, but I'm not. I don't, I'm not as natural at doing that as you. Like watching you do it is really great because I feel like Thanks. you're up there just like it, it feels like you're you're just grooving up there. And I can talk. I can talk for days, but it's not always going to be funny because I'm not. Yeah. And I can. And I'm. Ri- I'm a riff guy. Like I'm good with working with like a. I'm. I'm better in a duo. Like mm-hmm. if you see with me and Brian or me and Jordan or, sure. or me and anybody, I'm good with people because if I have somebody to work off with, I can take something they say and I can bend it to a way that makes it funny. And that's that's how, I, and then like we can come up with things, and then a lot of the videos we've done, like where it's a two man thing or a three man thing, mm-hmm. it's like we'll do like five takes, and by the fifth take, there's been five different jokes or four different jokes. The fifth take, we put all four jokes in, yeah, and then we have a finished product, and it's how we it's how we do it. And I I think whereas with you, the first take you usually just kill it. Like when I've seen you go on stage, you'll do an entire set that feels so natural. But at the same time, feels like it was polished. It's weird, man. That's why I said I think you're naturally gifted at it. And some people, like me, I'm not. I don't think Thanks. I'm good at just talking out well, in a fucking circle. Well, it was crazy. I used to go down to Indianapolis to uh, like Morty's. Uh, my cousin and I, and some a couple other guys, we'd all go down there. And this was like years back, right? Yeah. When Morty's was like one of the big spots. I don't even know if it's still around anymore, if it's changed owners or what the whole story is with it. But I met a lot of guys down there and everybody was cool. But you had guys from Indianapolis. You had guys from Carmel. You had guys from like Ohio coming. You had dude, a couple dudes from Kentucky. It's a nice like, little central hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like this, you know, this nice surrounding. Like you meet these guys and some of these dudes were like, okay. Um, they would have to email in advance. Go, oh, well, and get some stage time. Cool. Okay, cool. I'll come up and make the trip. And, you know, I lived an hour north, so 
I'm making a trip as well because I'm not an Indianapolis native. I lived down there for years, but I wasn't, you know. Yeah. So uh, would be kind of piss me and a couple other guys off who were from here. And it's yeah. like, you know, you, you would make the drive and they go, oh, we don't have time. I'm like, what do you mean don't have time? You email, like I sent you the email and he said, you know, come on down. And yeah. then and all of a sudden it's like, you're going to bump me. Oh, well, Ted, Ted came from Ohio. He drove like an hour. I'm like, I drove an hour too. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. so I was just like, it started to kind of sour me on a little bit. You got to build your scene. I mean, even if yeah. you were going to come yeah. from way, you still have to build your scene. Yeah. And I did like a couple of the contests and it's like, I didn't have the crowd down there in Indy because I no. knew, I didn't know people that I knew anymore. It's like, I, you know, if I reached out to like, say all my friends from down back in the day, I'm like, hey, I'm going to do a comedy night, you know, yeah. maybe that would have worked. Yeah. But I was just like, um, well, I think, that kind of sucks. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think as you as you level up in anything, like you don't want to always like. Y you want you want your, you want your your normal fan or you know, um, family and for friends mm -hmm. to like enjoy the things that you're doing and appreciate the things that you're doing. But you also want to learn it to, like, pull in new people. Right. So like I I think like that's I, a better skill anyway. Yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah 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 I. I haven't worked a lot of indie scene anything, but uh, I'm working myself up towards it. I haven't done a lot, like, I, this guy, uh, for the longest time, he was like, man, we need to get you up there doing stand-up. And I was like, man, I don't know if stand-up's going to be my thing. Like, yeah, yeah. like, and I would try to write some jokes and stuff like that. And like, I just knew you needed more like, stage time. However, it was my yeah, thing yeah, was yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. if it's comedy that uh, you know we could always use you. If it's you being in a TV show, if it's you doing yeah. wrestling, you need to be on the stage because I feel like you needed to hone your craft. Yeah, you're talking and you're getting yeah. so much better. Like, for a point, you're pissing off the sound guy. Yeah, I was like, man, he, wow, legit. <laughs> That was a good show because I think that was the Halloween show. Yeah, and, and like I know I pissed off everyone, so like mm, that. If, that's what a heel is supposed to yeah, do. And if, if you, you do that, if, if you walk in and you're not even speaking and everybody starts booing, it's like okay. And yeah, you, you're, you're just already... coming out doing your long strides, like good morning everybody, and they're like <laughs> yeah. get the fuck out, I can't stand this guy. And they're like hissing, and, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but, uh, so, so the, the thing is with the, with the comedy scene and. and in Indianapolis, and I've known other comedians that have done stuff down there. They yeah. get pissed off because they're like, well, if I go, I'm not going to name drop any clubs. I mean, I said Morty's because that's where I was going. I haven't really messed around too many others. But yeah. like, but some of the clubs, they'll say, well, you can come and you can do a set on open mic night, but you got to bring five people that are coming to pay. Oh, right. that's the game. Okay. Yeah, that's like the pay thing. That, play. Yeah, pay, pay to play. play. I mean, um, same with that thing with music, with my band. I'm like, I worry about that all the time because they want mm -hmm. to sell tickets. They said, oh, you got 10, second, 10 tickets you have to sell. I'm like, I'm not from India. I'm not going to fucking make people drive from Kokomo. 10 people drive from Kokomo. I, yeah, I mean, this is, this is why I like. I haven't gotten to situations like that yet. I'm sure they will come. They yeah. will. Um, I know they will come. Uh, the only thing I know how to do, like, is let me promote the shit out of As it. As a like, heel, how the fuck do you get people to pay? Like, hey, will you pay to come see me? No, I don't like you. Oh, that's fuck. different. I mean, <laughs> in wrestling, I feel like yeah. that's different. Like, I can talk, I can talk shit about anyone down like in Indy as long as we got a thing going on and like get enough people to be like, hey, let me what, let me see this guy get punched in the fucking yeah. face. Yeah. Like, because I, that's easy enough because you can talk about anybody's mama, yeah. right? <laughs> so, yeah, you know. I mean, pay to play aside. I mean, there was also a thing where. Some clubs would say, well, if you perform at this place, you can't perform at ours. Oh, man. And it was just like this whole thing. I'm like, man, you know, it's not like it's a massive community anyway. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's of these people, like, they would just start doing shows at bars. Or they'd start open mic night at other places because the comedy clubs just weren't, you know, well, that's as accommodating. Great. It seems like you're constantly caught between two worlds of people pulling you. I mean, between yeah. the, TV, the movie or the, the, the two movies you're doing, the, mm -hmm. the two shows you're doing locally, they're trying to pull you between that. And then you've got the same thing with the comedy. Show. It's, it seems like a lot of people feel like if you do, that's the great thing I think about Kokomo most of the time is like there are there are people that uh, perceive themselves as gatekeepers. They want to gatekeep things. Yeah. And I think we do a pretty good job independently, like of trying to make sure everybody can move within groups. Because like you, yeah. you do you do a Kokomo centric podcast called Waste yeah. Kokomo. Yeah. Check it out. We have no. Yeah. I have. It's a completely different thing than what we do. It's very similar to Kokomo. You guys have people on. Yeah. I've been yes. on there. But like you can. I've been on there. You yeah. can. I have no issue with people doing similar things in the same space because I think there's enough audience for all of us. Right. And I mean, if if somebody likes 
the Lace to Kokomo, they're not going to listen to our podcast like, well, i got to listen to this one now. It's better. Like, they're not going to do that. Yeah, they're going to enjoy the, the guys it's, on it's, it, life, it's yeah. like with comic books that people go, oh, Marvel's better. Oh, oh DC's better. It's like, you know, the people that are working there. It's all fucking art. They go from back, from, forth from one oh, yeah. to the other. It's like, you know, like I've met writers. It's like I met Roger Stern. Yeah. I've met him a couple different times. Great writer. He created the Hobgoblin. Yeah. He's he was one of the guys in in part of the death of Superman back in the nineties. Oh, yeah. He's done some pretty prolific stuff. He had a great Which run. Is the, one of the things they used for the Jack, Zack Snyder's thing. Right? Yeah, Superman yeah. was a big inspiration for that. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like he's done a ton of stuff. He's worked for both companies, and I've never saw or seen anything where he would shit talk one or the other. Yeah. He's just like. It's just the thing, like, because a lot of these guys are work for hire. Yeah. So they'll work wherever. So it's like, you'll have some of these dudes who are, like, big names. They'll, unless they, I mean, it's rare, but some guys will get the contract, and they'll, like, maybe get, like, a five-year deal with one company or the other, and they'll do their thing. Okay, great. And then, or, you know, and while they're doing that at the mainstream stuff, they'll do something independently. Yeah. And, because they've already got a following. Yeah. And then next thing you know, boom, maybe, you know, it's like uh, what Kirkman did. Yeah. Robert Kirkman, he did, because uh, he was writing for Marvel. Yeah. He was doing that for a while. And then um, he did the, like, he pitched Image, did The Walking Dead. Um, then he did Invincible. And it's like, you know, Walking Dead got turned into a TV series. And with a couple of spinoffs, prequels, yeah. and all that stuff. Invincible. Yeah. You know, it was a comic yeah. book. It ran, and now it's, yeah, it's on Amazon Well, Prime, they have so the same thing. They, they, they hired the guy that did the, that, what's that, what's the name of it? There's a big comic show. They just, they already canceled it, which kind of sucked. But they brought the guy who wrote it onto Netflix. And he did that huge, the, the huge, uh. Did you see that comic book, the, the, the comic book, uh, live action comic book, uh, superhero thing they did on, uh, Was it Jupiter's Legacy? Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah. yeah. What, what, you know that Mark Millar. Name? Yeah. He, he also, he wrote for what? Superman? Yeah. Yeah. He, he like, he's wrote, didn't he write for, uh, Smallville and shit too? Like, did he write for that show? I think that was Mark Millar. Yeah. He was part I think of that was, it. I think so. He was part of it. I remember his name because it's spelled uh, like Miller, but with an A. Yeah. So weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, but then he wrote Jupiter's legacy and then sold it to Netflix and they did that first season. I really enjoyed that show. It mm -hmm. was bummed that they got rid of it. it. I guess it was very expensive. It was an expensive. I, I mean, you know, I think I was flying around. around. I mean, it was, it was very, like, you know, I finished it, which I don't do that a lot. Of yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've also finished the, what, the three seasons of The Boys. That shit's fucking hilarious. Well, you know, like, Road to Perdition was a comic book originally. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people didn't realize that because people were like, I don't like comic movies. I'm like, well, if you watch Road to Perdition or if you've seen uh, White Out, the one that had... Uh, Lucifer. Yeah, Lucifer. Lucifer itself was, a, or was based yeah. on a Marvel series. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it was DC, but uh, Lucifer... Because yeah. it, cause it was a spinoff of yeah. Sandman. Yeah. yeah. Neil Gaiman, who's like, he's been doing... Oh, yeah. He's been steadily doing stuff with, like... Between Hollywood and, and comic, how do you feel about these new TV, these Marvel TV shows? Are you have you been in any, any of them? That have been, I know that you're 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 a book guy, like you really. Like yeah, but I do books. watch the shows. Do you I watch, watch some of them, not all. You hate like their love hate relationship with it. Um, between the source material and the actual. Well, shit it's, it's kind of like this. I remember years ago when Smallville came out and had its run. I knew guys, and I kind of got into a, this a little bit myself. Where I'd go, that didn't happen in the books. Yeah. yeah. Like, eh. And you almost have to, you, I mean, between any of the mediums, you have to go, well, Hollywood's going to, you know, stick their stinky pinky in there and change yeah. some things around, and yeah. they're going to modify characters. It's like, but you, you know, want it, too, a little bit, because you don't want it to yeah, be this accent. But sometimes there are moments where you like you have to kind of adapt. Like, um, you remember they did the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck oh, yeah. years ago. There wasn't anybody in Hollywood, like, who had the physicality, like, to play Kingpin. Oh, yeah. Michael Clark Duncan, he, he put on weight to do the role. Yeah, yeah. You know, he buffed up even even bigger just to do it. And I'm yeah. like, he was great casting. I but don't there remember were people... anybody being mad that he was black either. No, you that? no. You know, nobody no. gave a shit. It, it's, it seems like they don't care if it's like a villain or a side character. Like, yeah. in Smallville, Pete Ross, oh, in yeah. the comics, he was like, little blonde-haired kid, yeah. Peter's, yeah. or not Peter, but... Because uh, they ended up doing it in the new one, too. Yeah, and, and they made him a black kid. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool, whatever. It wasn't a big deal. I think, now, if you'd been like, oh, we're going to have black Clark Kent, people would like... What are you doing? Well, that's, 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 well, that's, out. I think that's supposed to be like Val Zod, which is another Kryptonian okay. character. But I know they said something about Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. gonna be pretty bad. They've been saying that for a while, though. I know, but there's yeah. actual plans. I oh, mean, okay. with 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 they've got the cool thing about okay, so the different the different big difference between Marvel and DC that I see movie wise, and you can correct me here because I know <clears> that you know a lot more. But I'm seeing Marvel has the the big overarching story, like they have it down, like they're like yeah. they're mm -hmm. playing chess. But the cool thing about uh, uh, DC is it feels like they can like play like a 3D version of chess where they're like doing so many different... They can have one version of chess down here where Superman's black, 
or they have a different version of Superman who mm -hmm. is black. Yeah. And then they have one over here where uh, Superman is actually, you know, Henry Cavill. And then they have one over here where Batman's a young guy. And then they have a Joker who's from the 60s, or not from the 60s, what, from the 70s, 80s, around that yeah. time. Like, they, they're basically, like, throwing all these different versions. And it's like this multiverse thing without yeah. the world building that eventually they could turn it into one big thing. Or they don't have to. They could. Yeah. Yeah. just be yeah. independent yeah. shit. I mean, like, I like it that it, I like, in a sense, that sometimes you just got stories. Yeah. Like, yeah. you got stories with characters. An independent, like, story. Like, and, like, I don't, like, I don't get too far into, like, man, they really should have done this. They really should have done that. But I've also never been a, a, a real, like, book guy. Yeah. A comic book. Like, I've, I've read stuff or, like, watched, like, the cartoons back in the day. Like, I'm not even sure I'm going to read so. those things. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. Um, What's that from? Uh, I'm not sure I learned how to read. I, I just memorized a lot of words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that thing, like, to be honest. Yeah. I, I might have dyslexia and dyslexia. 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 And Game of Throats. Yeah. Game of Throats. <laughs> Man, um, but, like, if you look at the, like, Marvel, they did some cool shit with the Netflix series. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because these, Daredevil, he had a movie years ago. But he wasn't like one of the top tier characters. No. But he was great. Like they had, they did a lot of stuff. And they people were so excited out. for that Matt yeah. Murdock character. The the um the, what's the Charlie Cox Charlie from the back? Cameo, and, I mean, yeah. If you've been watching Hawkeye, spoiler alert, don't want to ruin the But if you've been watching Hawkeye, they've been uh they've been alerting to Uncle and Uncle. Everybody is pretty sure it's going to be Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin, Kingpin, which as much as great as we were talking about coffee, uh, John Coffee was. <laughs> John <laughs> That's always I always think of him and John Coffee. You know what I mean? From fucking Green Mile. But like, as great as he was, man, Vincent D'Onofrio killed. That fucking role. He did, yeah. I mean, because it's a, it. it's a different, it's a different interpretation. Yeah, yeah. but and it was one that I thought it was it was rooted yeah. in, in realism in a way that you could feel that. Like, I remember watching the first season of Daredevil and and actually feeling bad for Kingpin, and then having to tell myself, "This guy's a piece of shit." What are you talking about? Like, yeah, you feel bad for his childhood. You kind of learn about who he was. Mm -hmm. You learned about you know his connection to the the woman that he's with, and uh, and all these, and you start to feel like. Like, he deserves to have love. And then you're like, but he's also killing people in a piece of shit. Yeah. I, I thought it was really cool when Luke Cage came out. Oh, yeah. Well, because yes. all of a sudden you had a spike in people getting Netflix because they were like, oh, shit. Because Luke Cage is one of those characters. He's been part of the Marvel Universe since the 70s. Came out during the black exploitation era. And they've just kind of evolved him off and on over the years. Yeah. Um, at one point, they paired him up with Iron Fist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his Power Man and Iron Fist was like a, a title. And it was great. Because it was like a cool little buddy book, you know. Yeah, they like I detectives. was really hoping they were gonna like, and, and that I, they did the defenders, but I yeah. was really hoping they were just gonna do Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Well, together. the problem is the guy that played Iron Fist, people didn't like it. I enjoyed. I enjoyed him. I actually liked that show. Yeah. I thought he was good. I thought it was a cool show. And the girl, the girl that played uh, the sword, the sword girl, the fuck was her name? Colleen Wing. She was amazing. They have her mm -hmm. in the new. She's in the new Matrix. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah. She was supposed. She had to pick between the Matrix. Or the new Shang Chi movie, and she picked the Matrix. I heard that she, they were filming the same time, yeah. And she had a role for both, Damn. prominent roles for both. I think maybe she was going to play the the sister to uh, she might have to uh, Shang Chi that yeah. take over the Enterprise, but she would have been badass as that too. Yeah. yeah. But I would give anything just to, like do do that, and then come back as Colleen Wing again, and then build up that that character was so fucking cool. I just thought it was a, it was an odd. There were too many left turns for me. Yeah, like, I watched it and I I enjoyed it for what it was, but at the same token, I was kind of going, you know, for somebody who's supposed to be the the master of uh, martial arts from Kung Lun, you get taken yeah. a lot of L's. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, got yeah, his yeah. ass whooped a lot. I was oh, like, yeah. man, like, or he's taking too long to beat up the minor thugs. It's yeah, like, yeah. It, it was almost like if it were a video game. He's just struggling. Like he must. He started on hard mode and was like, "Wait, which button was it that you block with?" <laughs> and so he just wasn't blocking. He's just like, "Yeah, you, you yeah." Oh, uh, well, he was yeah. having prop performance uh, performance enhancement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Needed, yeah, 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 performance yeah. issues. He needed. He needed a, a yeah, some type charge of charge. A Kung Lee version of like Viagra. Yeah. You know, he needed to I get mean, that, the Iron Fist. Then he got both of them going. You're like, all right. So now he's Iron Fists. They Ooh. made him so hippie. Like it was yeah. like. You know, and he had the beard, and I was like, he wasn't like that in the comics. It's like, yes, yeah. he lived over in, in Kunlun in this mystical realm, which was, you know, near Tibet or whatever, and he learned these martial arts, and he was raised there. But it's like, if you saw the other people that were there, they weren't acting like that. They didn't yeah. have beard. They were all like, kind of, you know. No, I think it's because he's white. It was a white. It was a, a white cast. They're like, in order to make him seem like he made sense in this 
Eastern culture. We got to make him seem like he's the type of Western person that would engage in this, and the type that yeah. would do that is like a hippie guy that Isn't just that, believes yeah. in love. That's a super trope, right? It's like, it's it almost is, like it's, it's a, in the white dude. It's, it's China, white, and then it's the white exploitation. Yeah, it's white exploitation. We we're talking about black exploitation. Yeah. Yeah. that's white exploitation. Well, you know, it's weird though. It's <laughs> not a thing. When, it's a thing. We're not making white exploitation. When it first came out, people were going, "Man, they should have made." Like, the people that were watching the Netflix shows, I'm like, you guys know fuck all about comics. Yeah. Because they were going to, you know, uh, they should have made uh, Iron Fist Asian. I don't know why they cast uh, Finn Jones. That's yeah, a bullshit okay. move. Okay. And, these, and, then, and then these would be the same people who'd be like, they'd watch Luke Cage and go, you know, there's a lot of black people in this show. I don't understand. There's only like what? I saw only white people, like the two, three cops. And the fuck? I'm like, it's set in Harlem. Yeah. It's set in Harlem. What do you think's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, damn, it's like if I, you know. If we did a... Well, I don't know, know modern-day Har Harlem is kind of different. Well, well yeah, it's it like gentrified as shit. <laughs> it just reminds I mean, they, me of Paul Mooney, the, the joke that they like... Didn't. Well, they do. They did the, 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 the Mexican with Brad Pitt. They did The Last Samurai with, with Tom Cruise. What are you going to have? Uh, he's like, I, I don't know what I want to play. Uh, he's like, I'm going to have Tom Hanks play the last N-word alive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you <remember> gosh. That? <laughs> Yeah, like just make it white guys be the last of every every race, oh, every God. every thing. I thought it was funny when uh, Spike Lee was going off about the hipsters, oh, like because he was like, "You got these damn hipsters up here in, in uh, Brooklyn, and they're buying up these properties, and they're riding on their pissy ass bicycles." And like he was just mad, like because yeah. they were just they were just moving in, and it's like it's not the neighborhood that he grew oh, up yeah. in. And he was, you know, he was upset. I mean, like, with yeah. that hat like this and those glasses, I mean, yeah. he looks like a hipster himself. Mark Blackman, yeah. yeah. I mean, these are the people that put Harlem on and put, like, places like that on, and then they're, like, mad because, like, then people <laughs> want to flock to it. It's kind of yeah. it's kind of funny, but I also understand, like... Like, I love this place, like, well, they love it, too. Yeah, they love it because of you. <laughs> right. And, so, that, and that goes back to Michael Che. White people make things safe. Black people make things cool. Asian things make people affordable. Make things affordable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. that's the truth though black people make yeah. things cool like that's really what the point here is like black people make things cool white people get excited about it they want to it's like it's the entire premise of uh get out yeah the, the coolest thing in the world is that black skin in that in that in that movie like oh we want to be cool because black people are cool we want to be black like them we want to have have this this coolness to us we want to be because there's, there's nothing more powerful than a rich black man i, you know right. what I mean he can I go in and out of both, that movie both worlds. everything black is better Everything back, yeah. Right. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was funny though. Uh, as much as Michael Jordan has been like this basketball legend, you never really saw him wearing his own brand. No, other than when he's on the court. Right. It was just <laughs> like you never just saw him casually strolling the street or whatever, yeah. or hop out of his limo with some Air Jordans on. No, well, like, dude don't care. No, he's, he's just wearing some Italian little fucking leathers yeah, for money. Yeah, he's like going to the loafers. golf course. He's not even thinking about oh, yeah. you know basketball. Like yeah, he he really is like as as he's so important to black culture. But his culture is like golfing and, and wearing like yeah, he's just, golf you know, hats and like polos and shit. He's like, like ultra conservative, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's you a, are, when you have money like that and you stand to lose all that money, if they start to redistribute the wealth, of course you're going to be like, it's like that, it's the Homer meme again, but except you come out like, I'm rich, so I don't want to pay taxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or like, uh, oh, who was it? Oh, God, I can't think of the guy's name. Was he he was, um, oh, it's gone. Shit. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Sorry. It's this guy. This is the, the whitest man on the planet right here. Here he is. There you go. Yeah, we, um, we have to have the dichotomy of like we pretend like we're smart with the statue of David bus and then like, Anna Kendrick's blow up doll over here. Yeah, I didn't know who that was. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, is that not? Like, it's Taylor Swift? I don't know. It was a funny joke. Uh, my girl and I were watching the Twilights because I like to watch them every once in a while. I think they're just the most hilarious little. They're, they're, they're so funny to me. I laugh. So is that your guilty time. pleasure? Oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like one of those things where it's like the, the acting and the and the situations are so bad that I just enjoy the storyline from it because of how bad the acting is. <laughs> Brooding. I just imagine Gangrel walking out. <laughs> <laughs> the Undertaker. Have you ever oh, seen the thing God. where they have Blade? Like they'll like they like have Blade in the background, and you see like the yeah. That's yeah. why like should have ended. I'm like yeah. Yeah. That, that which reminds me. Another spoiler. Did you see that? Did you guys hear the end of the Eternals with Mahershal Ali's Blade talking? Did you guys yeah. even see it yet? Mm -hmm. I, I, I saw that. They do a post credit scene as Mahershal Ali talking, saying. I don't think you're ready for that, or whatever. So, yeah. so the guy getting ready to grab the. You thing. know what the mess of thing was? It sounded like Wesley Snipes. It did. He sound. I cannot wait, dude. Well, Wesley Snipes did give the cosign. Did you see that? He was like, I he 
did, yeah. He totally did. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like, if you saw the blade that was in between, you remember Kirk? Sticky right. Jones? <laughs> Sticky fingers from Onyx, okay? Yeah. Like, in early 2000, when they say 2005, 2006, uh, I think it was Spike TV, yeah. when it was around, they want to do a Blade series. Like, okay, cool. So they got, like, Jeff Johns, David Goyer, both of them great writers. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, and so they came up with the series, and I think they did just one full season, but they changed the Blade. It's like, so all of a sudden, it's like, Sticky Fingers is intimidating, but in a different way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and he did the fighting scenes and stuff well, but he has his lazy eyes, so they put the sunglasses on him. And I'm not knocking the guy. I'm not knocking the guy. Yeah, yeah. But they, he, he, there were many times he's just standing wearing sunglasses. And, you know, you never saw him without him. Like, there were a couple times you did, they'd have a shadow. He'd be in a shadow, so it was like an angle, so you couldn't really yeah. tell. But it's it's almost like they were aware of it and trying to kind of navigate around you it. You embrace the eye. No, no, like, why not? You know, you could have got that injury or give him, like, a crazy scar or something. I'm I mean, just lean I'm gonna, into I'm going to kill you. Which one of us? Which now, one you going to kill? You're looking at both of us. Plus, but, that dude helped, helped create Slam, which was probably one of the best songs ever. <laughs> and then, and then the, when they did the uh, the remix with Biohazard, oh my god, off the charts. I mean, actually, if you look at like the Judgment Night soundtrack, to me, that's still one of like that would be like one of my top ten soundtracks because it was like rap and rock in a time where it wasn't like mainstream as it, as it kind of went, yeah. like pre Limp Biscuit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like when Limp Biscuit came out, it's like they were just they were like, this is what we do. And I'm like, okay, cool. But prior to that, it was like an event because you had like. You know, Faith No More and Booyah Tribe, and you'd pair up all these different groups and go, "Oh my God, what's going on here?" Yeah, but it was it was magical, you know. It's it's almost like when, yeah, yeah, walk yeah, this yeah, way. That yeah, was yeah. that was really kind of a jumping on point. Yeah. And then Ho came out with the thing with Lincoln Park, and mm-hmm. you know, I think that flopped more than anything. Really. No, it didn't. They did. A, they, okay. they made money. They came out. Then not only did they do the album, they also did a live album. You don't do a live album if you don't make money. You know, the, the best version of that though was not the 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 Hove and uh, Lincoln Park version. It was the Hove and the Beatles uh, Grey album version. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that Danger Mouse. Yeah, that yeah. shit was dope. Yeah. That's some wild stuff. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. I thought that this it was. I thought the stuff with Lincoln Park and Hove was pretty cool. I thought it was a cool a cool sound. It was different. You know? Yeah. It was different. It was a different feel to it, and they mashed it together. But it did seem like a little bit lazy because they're like, "We're just going to take two different songs that we already wrote and put them together. We're not going to work." Yeah, I, yeah. Well, it created so. As all things go, we we get back to wrestling, right? Like so, what that created was like so now like when random tag teams get mashed together, yeah, they just. Their songs together, uh, <laughs> so they're like, yeah, like yeah. Let's not either. think of anything. Let's just do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. or it's yeah. almost like a super group. Like when you get guys who are like big in other bands, and they come together and do some wild shit, and it's like, you know, Velvet Revolver, Electronic, yeah, Johnny Marr, Bernard Sumner. Yeah. Oh my god, like, and then they had like first albums like Neil Tennant from the Pet Shop Boys, second album Carl Berto from Kraftwerk, third album was Arthur Baker. He used to do a lot of breakdance shit, and I was just like. Yeah. Fun stuff. I mean, yeah. very British. I mean, you know, but it is what it is. And um, I think Johnny Marr, he's doing, he's been doing solo stuff for the past few years, but he was with Modest Mouse. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he was just kind of a fill-in guy or if he was just, you know, Johnny just, he's one of those guys, he can walk amongst the tribes, you yeah. know, um, like musically. He just, you'll see him do like, he might do some random acoustic set and then he's like just doing the jamming out like hard and it's like... It's I mean, it's weird when you look at like writing credits on like oh, some of the biggest songs and you find out that like they were written by like that 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 song by Ed Sheeran the I'm in love with the shape of you yeah. that was originally written for Rihanna that's why it had that uh, dum, 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 dum. Mm. it was supposed to have that reggaeton feel wow. to it for her and then he they ended up like they, I guess he was getting ready he was gonna try to get a hold of her to sell it to her and they're like don't use it and then it became one of the most successful songs of all time wow. yeah just crazy which I would have loved to hear Rihanna on it. Could yeah. you imagine her singing this one? Yeah, that, I mean, it probably would have banged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would have been just any, as good. Uh, any of bang, so. I would just like Rihanna just to drop something. I mean, when was the last time besides the Fendi, a new Fendi thing? <clears throat> is it Fendi? Is that the thing she has? What's Fendi Savage. Fendi. Fendi? Savage. Fendi Savage. Yeah, you would know. Mm-hmm. Your girl's probably into it. Yeah. Just make up. There. I just know these <laughs> things. <laughs> you know these Should things. He like, might be into it. You never know. Yeah, yeah, you never yeah, know, man. I don't care. I don't know. The nails aren't done today, so I feel like he's the more masculine Jordan today. I... Yeah, he's mask. He's mask. Uh, mask showing Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Mask off. Fuck it. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah. Mask off. Mask off. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 
man, there's like, just, it, it's interesting because you've got, like right now, we're at a point where everything, like, you know, doing this show, you know, it's like we cross promote each other basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, and we don't have the complications that it's like, oh, well, I gotta check with this company first. I gotta oh, check my higher ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, It's like, oh, Lenny, uh, you wanna go to the Well, I need to what? Yeah. Independent creator. I mean, it's like, oh, I gotta check my agent. I'm like, no, you just yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, it's like either yay or nay and then move forward. Yeah. Um, and I feel like in corporate, corporate America seeing that, Hollywood seeing that. And so that's why, like, they'll snatch a person here, snatch a person there, go, yeah, yeah, come on. Come into the fold. We want to do some more stuff with you. Yeah. Expand. And it's like, expand your brand. It's like, all right, cool. Well, I talked about I, this on one of the very first episodes that yeah. we did on the podcast. Yeah. Where, like, there's no such thing as, like, famous people, like, anymore. Like, yeah. I really don't think there is because you can create your own fame. Yeah. And create your own pool of, like, followers or, like, followers. Create your own audience, audience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you build your own audience and then you take been... them with you where you go. I think that's the most important thing for young creators in general and, and, and new creators in general is you build your audience and then you tell your audience where you're going and either they follow you or they don't and they hit you up on the next project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's 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 a great thing. I mean, that's one of the things I learned really quickly with my band is, like, my band, uh, Greg Garden, by the way, we're, we're going to be uh, releasing an album soon. We, we finished up recording. Spring of Six is one of the songs, check it out. It, we're on everywhere, you can check us out. But the cool thing about my band is initially all of us, every last one of us, were in other bands. And then we created, uh, when you're talking about super groups, we yeah. just created like a super group of guys that were all in different bands that all played together. Mm -hmm. And then we, we come up with this we come up with this band. And I think I honestly think it's some of the best music that I've heard in a while. Listening, the, 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 not even just my part of it, just listen to them, they're great. Mm -hmm. like, just wait till all of us creative groups in Kokomo come together and we create this, like, you know, Avenger-esque type. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> We're like the Avengers crossover. The, the Kokomo Cinematic Universe yeah, yeah, yeah. is involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I show up making a cameo here and there, and yeah. it's like, we crossed over to ACW yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting, like, the conversation we had about, like, you know, because you were asking about acting, and I'm like, yeah. and I'm just like, well, look at this right. actor, look at this actor, because I was like, these are people I thought who did, like, amazing shit with what, you know, they, like, okay, Michael Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor on Smallville, right. holy shit, yeah, yeah. he there was amazing, but you know what, John Shea played a great Lex Luthor in um, Lois and Clark, Yeah, yeah. and so, it's like, and I was just like, borrow some from him, borrow some from him, if you can kind of cover this nice gray area, because if you notice, these guys could go from charismatic to psychopath. And real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Real, and that's what I noticed. Like, I, I know you gave me a lot of advice on actors to follow, like, or at least studies mm -hmm. to, to watch, or, like, uh, for different performances. And, yeah. Like, I've done that a lot. Like, even Jordan give, has given me a lot of ideas of, like, who to follow. Hey, watch this movie. Watch how this dude acts in this movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, like, when I first started creating The Curator, like, you both were like, hey, pull some Joker. Like, it's yeah, kind of yeah, weird. I, mean, he, I feel it. I feel he, it. I re it reminded me of Jack Nicholson's Joker when he went, went yeah. to the uh, uh -huh. the uh, the museum and he was writing on all the things. Like, we're yeah. going to make the art about me. Yeah, like, yeah, I really yeah. love that yeah. aspect yeah. of what you were doing. And I'm like, don't do the Joker. Yeah. But that feeling of like, oh, it's a it's a big piece of art, but if my touch was strong, yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. better. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Mona Lisa would be cool. But, but, but me... I can put some lips on it. There, there's a, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because there's a dark flamboyance among some of these characters. Yeah. And when I say flamboyant, I mean that outgoing outwardness. It's not like, yeah. it's like, hey, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. no, that's, yeah. it's yeah. just this larger presence. And so I saw you really start pushing that energy out like that. And I saw, like, like I could see in your performances where it's like, you're totally, you're mimicking some of what I've, I showed you. I'm like, he's totally doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, like, it, and it works. Yeah. And, and then add your own spin to it. And the, the, the yeah. fact that, like I said, People were reacting to you, like, because at first you're like, oh, maybe he's not, you know, I don't know, we'll see. Because, you know, I've never gotten booed there. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, somebody give me shit, but not many people. Yeah. You're uh, a pretty likable guy, though. I yeah. try. I mean, it's like, I just try to do my thing. and you Nobody's know. booing JR, either. You know? no. no. But no. although it's funny, there were a couple of times, some of the wrestlers were like, give me the intro like you did Christian. Yeah. They were like, hey, man, why don't you announce me like that? Or put something, put some more oomph into it. I'm like, okay, I can do that. No problem. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't like, oh, fuck you. I'm doing my job. I'm like, no. 
Yeah. This is what they want. They want bigger. I can do bigger. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just like, yeah, you know, all right, sure. I crank it up a few notches. No problem. <laughs> like, because I feel like these guys, you know, they're they're really playing bust that's ass. When you, that's when you say, well, Christian gives me a ten spot every time. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Where's my t and then you walk out with hundred bucks every day. I know. Hey, right. oh I did my, my job and made a hundred extra bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, you throw a little jasky in my hand ski. You're like, yeah, yeah. my help ski. Because I just remember, like, when you when you started doing it, I was just the dollar. I know. What am I supposed to do with the dollar? You better come back. It's like a, right. Come back with one dropped on the ground. Cut your pennies. Yeah. All right, listen here. Listen, <laughs> listen, Siri. Get under my shit. Siri's in my business. I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> it's like we're gonna try food stamps next. Step yeah. your game up. Yeah, exactly. If, if I don't you, know, I'll, I'll take an EBT card. There you go. I hear if you need dollars, Simon Dempsey likes to throw them at people. Oh yeah, that so, was crazy. So, I mean, that's kind of cringy. I, <laughs> you're very funny, but kind of cringy. I love, the, I love the character. Hated that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, I love you, Simon. If you've watched this, you probably don't. But I, I, I don't think we do love you. But I don't like the whole like 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 cat calling thing it's not my thing yeah we can do better but it's it. also his it's also his character so it I is get it. it is and we all are gonna fail and he's like it's not a character it's who i am like fuck you okay I'm like, oh, God, it's even, if it's worse if it's you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, yeah there's no deniability if it's just you like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. at least sometimes i can be like oh no i was trying this thing out <laughs> yeah right right yeah, it was, was experiment fun. it was a pilot yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's okay <laughs> though yeah i know uh i know uh, the great thing about what we're all doing in Kokomo right now is that there's so much content for people to do. I mean, we, we had Kelly McKinney on here. He's doing mm -hmm. his own show. Yeah. We had Michelle. She's a part of that show. She does her own voiceover stuff. We've got Lenny here. He's been a part of multiple movies. He's in Canary Currency right now. You multiple can check. Plays, yeah, multiple mul plays, movies. Like, stand up. Did you, did you used to do DJing for like IUK too for a while? Was that um, like I, no, I, 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 I hosted a, a radio show or something. Well, I had a I had a, a podcast called Pig's Pen. Okay. And I did that for about almost four years. Yeah. Okay. Because they were doing the uh, radio. That was like early Oval. podcasting. Like, yeah. Like, before, like wow. you were doing it early. Yeah. I remember, like 2012. And I had, I had, it was crazy. I'd get like sometimes these interviews with people, like my producer at the time, Grace Gads, and it's like she ended up getting, uh, there was a guy who was going to perform in IUK, and he had done like the Obama inauguration as a singer. And so she brought him in, so I'm interviewing him. I'm like, yeah. hey, cool, you know, this is great. Uh, some of the people I knew that were doing stuff as far as like the musicians, local artists, and yeah. things, because like I just, I've always just been around that scene. Like I'm always kind of been entrenched in the arts. I always knew people doing stuff. Yeah, I'm like creative people. We love yeah. creative people. That's what yeah. we. That's what we're. We always are like trying to like champion the creative. That's our thing here. It's like enter entertainers ch and creatives. We want you to come be a part of what we do. And it's like we'll share things that people do that we that we that are creative things. Like if you have something going on, obviously hit us up. Say hey man, I yeah. got this thing. You got to share it. We'll fucking share it. We'll put we'll cool. blast it. And we've done it for obviously for Canadian currency and things like that. Things that we know people because before I was even on Canadian currency, we were sharing shit about Canadian mm -hmm. currency. Yeah. Before I, uh, we ever did anything with the company because we're not on the the company yet. We're just sharing things about the company. Yeah. yeah. So like anything we see local, that's like a a, a production. Yeah. Where it is. It's a, it's a local thing. We want we want to we want to big up that kind of stuff. Yeah, I haven't seen Kelly in years. It was so when I saw him getting interviewed on the show, I went, "Oh my god, he's still around." The like, fuck is yeah. alive? Because I, I, I thought you know I I remember I think one of the last times I talked to him, he was talking about going other places and going to Illinois and this yeah. and the other. I'm like, cool, because you know it was funny years ago. I was in in Illinois for Wizard World. Yeah. And um, a buddy of mine, him and his girlfriend, they lived over in I think it was called Anderson. Yeah. Nice little area, and I just take I take the train to get to the convention center in uh, Rosemont, like maybe twenty minutes on the train, no big deal, right? And um, I remember one day my my buddy was his wife. Now she came in, and she was like, "Man, they're doing some kind of filming a few blocks away." It was like uh, Rory's first kiss, I guess, which I later found out was Batman Begins. I was oh, like, God. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like I was a few blocks away from that. Oh, you know? oh. And, but Chicago was like that. Every time I'd be down there for a trip or a convention or whatever, Something's when the, like the day I'm leaving, I'd find out some shit. You know, um, like I think the last day I did Wizard World, and I was gonna head on back, and I'm standing, but I'm waiting on a cab, and I look over, and to my left there's this billboard, and it's like Pet Shop Boys tonight at such and such. I'm like. No! I gotta leave and I'm gonna run out of money being here. I have to go. I just have to go. I don't wanna think about it. It's the big cities, you can actually find things to do. It's oh, yeah, it's, it's, and I'm not used to that because it's yeah. like, well, correction. When I was in Indianapolis, there was always some kind of stuff going on. If I didn't yeah. want to go to like hang out abroad or go to like, you know, Chatterbox or something in Mass Ave or, you know, uh, 
find some cool little spot on the west side get yeah. some food just chill out or or just get some different kind of cuisine yeah you know i mean they had a handful of different kind of cuisines down there Chicago, though, it's like, oh, we got this Asian fusion bistro or yeah. this Ethiopian food. I'm like, really? It's a place you can get a colonic and you can have like a nice little cafe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. If your asshole's getting blown out while your asshole's getting blown out. <laughs> yeah. And I think they were doing that in those leather bars, America. too. The leather bars. I didn't, I didn't go in, though, to find out. I didn't want to investigate. This is America. Come get your asshole blown. Come <laughs> get, get your rectum wrecked. <laughs> wrecked. 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 They wrecking rectums in these United States. I reckon they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I reckon they're wrecking rectum. Oh in and out. No yeah. shit. Yeah. No, no actually, 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 it's probably a lot. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Unless they did a colonic, you know, ahead of time. But yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I got my cold and clean. You want to hear my cold and clean? <laughs> right. <laughs> I the clumps oh, oh, my God. <laughs> did I ever tell you about the time I was the cozy and this old lady took a douche bottle out of her purse? What the oh, fuck? What? We were hanging out. I was hanging out at the bar having some drinks. Me and some of my buddies were sitting there shooting a shit. And this older lady's sitting down there, and she's, like, really, like, she thinks he's still young. She's, yeah. like, flirting with people and shit. Oh. And she was like, how you doing there? I said, I'm okay. You ever been with a black woman? I'm like, I'm with somebody. <laughs> Thank you, though. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, that's, you know. Yeah, I like a little bit of my time yeah. even kind of time. I'm really she's saying. Right. <laughs> but um, she lost her keys or something, so she starts taking everything out of her purse. And sits a douche bottle on the counter, and everybody was like, "Oh my god!" The bartender's like, "Get the fuck out!" She's like, "What?" He goes, "You've got a douche bottle on your sleeves." And she didn't go, so she got her stuff and dipped out. And it was just like, "Oh my god!" I love how we have to say "douche bottle" because we've taken the word "douche,", douche which it should just be called like a douche, and we turn right. douchebag into being like a, <laughs> and we have to like explain that it's the bottle that yeah. we were originally douching with. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. They're not actually bags. Yeah. I don't know if you. No, I think it's the douche bags are normally like the people that piss you off. Yeah, the, yeah. The douche bags. I that. I don't know. For the longest time, I thought they were bags, and then I was like, oh, it's a bottle. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I so mean, they had those hot like, <laughs> water bottles. That, that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, but I think I only learned this from fucking South Park because you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giant dude. When was, dude, when I was doing Giant my uh, shit, shit, when sandwich. I was doing the podcast with IUK, you know, I. There was no need to get like an FCC license or any of that kind oh, of yeah. stuff because it was all on the internet. And sometimes I'd curse a little bit here and there. And uh, one of the guys that helped out, he was doing, he had a different program. He's a different producer. And he was just like, hey, um, do you think you might be able to get some of those radio edits for some of those songs? I saw you had a couple of Wu-Tang tracks, which is great. I love the Wu-Tang, but, you know, that language. I'm like, it's the internet. It doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? I'm like, it, there's no... No FCC. Yeah, there's, there's, there's yeah, there's no it's regulations. It's it's yeah. the it's, I, you know, I'm pissing in the woods. Nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. it's not a big deal. And he was just like, oh, I, you know, I think you could do better. I'm like, but well, you're not my producer. Nothing to fuck with. Right. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not censoring ODB. Fuck that. <laughs> that <shit laughs> Seriously, like, yeah, it, it's not the same. It's just not. I mean, shame on the nut. We tried to earn game on the nut. We buck wild with the trip. It's like. Mm, yeah, yeah. It just sounds like somebody's having a seizure. Yeah. You know, somebody's not well. I mean, Call to be doctor. fair, to be fair, ODB generally sounded like he was having a seizure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, ODB. You are the GOAT. Yeah. Probably one of my favorites. Yeah. But <laughs> I remember, I think it was Double XL Magazine did an interview with him. And the guy, the writer, and I think it might have been Kevin. Oh, God, I can't think of his last name. McAllister. No. <laughs> But he said he referred to ODB <laughs> as the Richard Pryor of hip hop, and I'm like, yeah, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just I can he, see that. he did some pretty great stuff and off the charts. And Shh, what's this? Richard Pryor running down the street. Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> yeah. That's all uh, I think of is that. It's, uh, the, the... <laughs> it's so wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love that he was such a badass. That he was like, I'm gonna go on stage. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's, like, right. it's about me. Yeah, it's like not? it's like Louis C.K. walking out and be like, yeah, so. Apparently, I have to jerk off from people. Like in the new special, where he's like, "Listen, guys, I, I asked." That's so what he said. I asked. That's the first thing he says, uh, "I asked," and it's like, and it's like you have to break the tension with that right. shit. Mm -hmm. Say it with me now. Consent matters. Consent matters. Oh, nobody said it. Yeah. <laughs> <Consent> <laughs> matters. Well, I mean, but, but the funny yeah. part is like, he did get technically consent, yeah. and they're like coerced consent because. Yeah. Of the power dynamic. Matter. I don't care. To me, it's all weird, man. If you're an adult person and somebody asks you to do something that you're uncomfortable with, just say no. You know, yeah, the power Nancy Reagan no. was right. You know, just say no. Yeah. I'm just kidding. 
All right, let's wrap this up. We've got an hour and a half in here. We've got Ooh. Leonard Pig. We've got we've got the, the man who does it, who's done everything, like literally everything. Yes, every that's right. literally got his hands in every cookie jar in in Kokomo, Indiana, and I love it. I love it because like we got we got to give a shout out to the the, the, the Waste of Kokomo podcast. Yes, which yes. When it will be on literally yesterday because it'll be Monday when this comes out. Right. But check it out. They, you can find it on the Waste of Kokomo on Facebook. Right. On Amos Mags, he writes he, he writes for Amos Mag. He, Which is now Amos-Cola.com. Show for collaborative, but yeah, check yeah, it out. Check it out. Um, uh, and if you want to see me do stand-up, I've got a show coming up. It's a benefit show Oh yeah. Uh, for the Literacy Coalition in Howard County. It is going to be on the 17th, which I believe is a Friday. Yeah. This coming Friday. And it's yeah. at the Sun King Brewery in the upstairs room. And uh, you can get out. your tickets ahead of time at... The Literacy Coalition over on uh, Cortland, and it's like right off of Markland by Morris. I can't remember. Comedy the for a cause, baby. Yeah, yeah. So please check it out. Please come support it. And uh, can you grab tickets online for that or anything? I don't know if they're doing it online. There is an event page for it on Facebook. But, At the door. Uh, they probably will, I imagine. So. And and check out this guy right here in Canary Currency on Tubi on Amazon Prime. They just released a. Uh, there's gonna be a new episode released in January, but they released the teaser for it. You can find that on our page, more than likely on our individual pages. Yep. We'll also post it on the Kokomo Press page, so you guys can check that out. But like I said. Most prolific guy in Kokomo right here. Does thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, appreciate we appreciate it. having you. Um, I just wanted to say before we end up, uh, uh, I'm Jordan. I'm Jordan. I'm Leonard Pig. And thank you for enjoying the Kokomo uh, Press podcast. Kiss it. Hey, thanks for checking out the Kokomo Press podcast. I'm Jordan Granger. Uh, Jordan and I are very happy that you guys tuned in. All of our links are available. We've got YouTube. That's right here. We've got uh, our Twitters. I'm going to put those right over here. And then uh, we've even got like Patreon. We've got uh, Facebook. We've got Instagram. We've got all the places. So please check us out. And merch. We have merch. Check out our merch. Oh, my God. We have merch. So if you love the Kokomo Press, you enjoy the Kokomo Press podcast, or you just want to you know, help out and do something with us, check out the Kokomo Press on merch on ProWrestlingTees.com. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on all the places that we have available. Thank you for listening to the show. We love you. Hey, also, too sweet, yeah. I love cock, baby. I love cock, baby. I love cock.